1955 brought lefty fireballer Herb Score, who recorded 245 strikeouts, a rookie record that still stands in the American League. The following year saw the emergence of Rocky, Calabito, and Wright, whose arm and bat brought continued hope to Cleveland. But 1957 began an onslaught of bad luck and hard times for the Tribe. Score was hit in the eye by a line drive, essentially ending his promising career. 54 trades in a three-year span saw the likes of Roger Maris, Early Wynn, Hoyt Wilhelm, and their beloved Rock leave town. 21 different managers would come and go, and the Indians would struggle through 35 straight seasons without finishing higher than third. Along the way, some brief moments of hope would brighten the huge ballpark on the lake. There was sudden Sam McDowell, who would lead the league in strikeouts five times in the mid to late 60s. Gaylord Perry would win his Cy Young Award in 1972. Frank Robinson would make history as the first black manager. He could also still swing a mean bat. Also making history, 23-year-old fireballer Dennis Eckersley in 1977. Yet for too long, the Indians were a star-crossed loser, their park a home for disappointment, and last year, a team visited by tragedy and sadness. The Indians will never forget the past. Never has one mile seemed like a thousand. As we travel the mile from Municipal Stadium to spanking new Jacobs Field, the old has met the new, and it likes it. Welcoming the fans here in Cleveland today, one of the classic old Cleveland Indians. His statue stands outside, the Hall of Famer, Rapid Robert Feller. And the fans are just getting a taste when they hit the turnstiles. 42,000 plus on hand today to see the old style ballpark. The nooks and the crannies of the outfield wall. The fans nestled close to the action. And oh yes, by the way, the White House on hand. President Bill Clinton, his first pitch to Sandy Alomar Jr. was indeed over the plate. As all of Cleveland hope, is hoping that 1994 is over the plate. Brave new world for the Cleveland Indians. Time to play. Play ball. Well, if the president can throw a strike, we hope we can too. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Chris Berman along with Buck Martinez, and I think it's fair to say, Buck, that the understatement of the day, maybe of the year, welcome back to Major League Baseball and what a sight we have here at Jacobs Field in Cleveland. You can feel the excitement, but it's not only because of the new ballpark. That's right. You can really say it. You can spell the word contender. The Cleveland Indians could be somebody this year. They could be a contender. They sure could, Chris. You know, John Hart, the general manager of the Indians Ball Club, back in 92, had an idea looking ahead to this opening day. He said, if I sign some key young players and allow them to develop, at that point, then I can bring in free agents. Well, those key young players, Kenny Lofton, Carlos Baerga, and Albert Bell, have developed into franchise players now. So John Hart went out and signed the free agents. He brought in Eddie Murray, Jack Morris, and Dennis Martinez, real veterans. And you can bet there's going to be more to talk about in Cleveland this year than just the ballpark. Well, the other team today, the Seattle Mariners, certainly have had a history that lasts long than the Cleveland Indians, but uh, they're kind of on the same uh, keel. They have never spoken the word contender, but now with the newfangled AL West, all right, we're going to call it the American League Smythe Division. The Seattle Mariners, not only are they contenders, but they're picked by many to win it. Is that accurate, Buck? Yeah, I think it is, Chris. You know, for a long time, the Mariners were a club that would develop young players, but they could never keep them around. Now they have made commitments to star players. Ken Griffey Jr. signed long-term. Randy Johnson, today's starter, is signed long-term. So they believe that they can contend. There is that commitment from the ball club, and the players feel it. They think now that they are legitimate contenders, and they can win it this year. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Seattle, contender. Cleveland, contender. Brand new ballpark. It's great. It's sunny. It's opening day. I don't know. If I were you, I'd stick around. The Mariners and the Indians from Jacobs Field in a moment. He 
ESPN's presentation of Major League Baseball is brought to you by Ramada. Stay with us on your next holiday and discover why Ramada's in. Hotel Views goes on location to see if Holiday Inn can beat Ramada for business travel. Gene? Earlier, we asked one executive why he stays at Ramada. It's simple. Great rooms, great service, great price. So, Ramada is great for business travel. Bob? Thanks, Jane. Here's a gentleman who often comes to Holiday Inn on business. Yep, for years. Terrific. What do you do? Inspect their elevators. Has its ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like for business travel, Ramada's in. Holiday's out. Okay, here goes. Abracadabra. No dialing? Like Shazam? Just my voice? Okay, okay. Call home. It works. I knew it would. Call now for the revolutionary voice-activated phone card. Only from Sprint. You can feel the heat. 1,100 degrees. Intense heat. The hottest. We asked some of the hottest guys in town to trade their deodorant for new degree deodorant. Body heat activated. Let's give it a shot. As your body heat rises, only degree releases extra protection against odor. When I heat up, deodorant's gonna kick in. It works far better than speed stick. Kicked in for me. Switch to the stick that's body heat activated. Uh, I'm gonna stick to degree. I'd use it. The stuff works. Absolutely. Cool as ice. New degree deodorant for a higher degree of protection. Where they get your wish for fish? It's Long John Silver's for great batter dip taste. Now I'll get our original one piece fish and fries just a buck seventy nine. Only one place can grant your wish. Well, it's Long John Silver's when you want to throw a fish. New nut rages from Reese's. Peanuts, milk chocolate, caramel, Reese's peanut butter. New nut rages. Mmm, give your mouth a party. And welcome back to Jacobs Field in Cleveland. Chris Berman along with Buck Martinez. So glad you could be with us yet. Another opening day here on ESPN. And a busy day for this gentleman. Uh, and a sporting day. I think a day that uh, all of us sports fans would like to have. Opening day at a new yard. And then the president and his entourage, which is more than two or three, will head on their way down to Charlotte for the final game of the NCAA Basketball Championship to see if Arkansas can beat Duke. Well, here's a view of Jacobs Field. 325 down each of the lines. There's a 19-foot little green monster out there that travels two-thirds of the way, as you can see, to the left center field corner. We're going to call that Jacobs Ladder. That left center field corner is the deepest part of the park, 410. Dead center is 405. Then this is a continued view from center field on out towards right. The Indians' bullpen is in right center field. The visitors' bullpen is right down the line. There are three mounds so that pitchers can warm up a righty, a lefty, and as we said last night, an underhander like Eddie Fainer, I guess. It's four and a half feet elevated, but still a little bit separated from the crowd. Not everyone in the park has the view of the bullpen as they do in Baltimore. 42,400 is the capacity here, and they expect to draw three million fans. The Indians in their history have never drawn more than 2.6 million, and that was back in 1948, a season that was magical, a season which the Indians won the American League playoff for the Boston Red Sox and won the World Series for the Boston Braves. Can they talk series again here in Cleveland? They begin their task against the Seattle Mariners. We'll be back. If Burger King had just one customer, we'd have just one way to serve the number one preferred burger. But since you come in more than one size, so does the flame broiled Whopper. Like the new Whopper Junior, with more beef than before. Or double Whopper, with more beef than you believe. There's a Whopper taste for any size appetite from the everyday value of 99 cents. Whopper meals from $1.99. We don't have to be the world's number one fast food place. Just yours, and yours, and yours. Welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? Son of a gun protectant. Nothing works better on your car's leather, vinyl, and rubber. It can turn just about anything into a great-looking car. Nice car. What, this pile of junk? 
Give it the gun with Son of a Gun. And now give your tires a quick kick with One Step Tire Care. You gonna be all right? Just Back in Cleveland, you can see the baseball balloons. And the teams have just been introduced. They've just finished the Indians' introductions. And, uh, but by far and away, this is not the only opening day. Gary Miller, back in our Baseball Tonight studio, has his hand on the pulse of opening day in baseball. Hello, Gary. Hello, Boomer. Thanks a lot to you. We'll get right back out to you. The pulse says that realignment is not the only new thing in the baseball season. New studio here. I hope you enjoy it. We'll be with you throughout the day to update you on action. You saw Bill Clinton throwing out the first pit at, pitch at Jacobs Field. Where's his wife? Well, she's at Wrigley Field, where she'll throw out the first pitch for her favorite team, the Cubs. And Nancy Kerrigan, the silver medalist, will throw out the first pitch at Fenway Park, her favorite team being the Red Sox, nearby her home. Roger Clemens coming off his worst season, hoping to improve on that right from opening day. Dennis Martinez in our game against the strikeout king Randy Johnson. And his key against Brown in Yankee Stadium as we go through all the opening day starters on this first day, uh, first official day of the 125th season. First full day of games, of course, the Cardinals won at Cincinnati. They'll try to follow that up this afternoon in about an hour. We'll keep you posted on all the games. The Dodgers don't open until Tuesday when Oral Hershiser goes against the Marlins, but their main concern, AWOL Daryl Strawberry, who finally turned up late Sunday night saying he spent Easter with his family. Dodger General Manager Fred Clare said that excuse was not tolerable. He expects disciplinary action. They have a 2 p.m. Eastern time workout this afternoon. We'll let you know what goes on there. We'll also get you back out to Jacobs Field for the first game at Cleveland Stadium right after this. He's unconscious. What medications is he on? I'm not sure, but he has the Birdie Smart Card, and all his medications are stored right on the card. When every second counts, count on Birdie Smart Card for vital medical data. Allergies, blood type, medical history, and more. So you'll get the best treatment in any emergency. The Birdie Smart Card lets me give my patients the fastest, most accurate medical attention possible. In an emergency, it can save your life. My wife has a pretty involved medical history, but with the Birdie Smart Card, I have peace of mind. Benefit from having current, accurate medical information 24 hours a day for the special introductory price of just $29.95. Call 1-800-67-BERDY. Have your physician's name and phone number ready. Your dad is doing just fine. We found the information we needed to treat him on the Birdie Smart Card. When every second counts, be smart. Order the Birdie Smart Card today. Want to save money on your utility bill? Who doesn't? Just plug your refrigerator or washer dryer into a green plug. Inside, a little computer monitors your appliance's power needs and regulates the flow of electricity so it runs efficiently without wasting. You could save up to $30 a year on your refrigerator alone. How can you not like a product that pays for itself? Get a green plug. Back in Cleveland at Jacobs Field, the new home of the Cleveland Indians. Will it be the home for 62 years? If so, Buck, they hope they have a few pennants to hang up from the flagpoles around the stadium. And maybe by that time, the Seattle Mariners, too, will be playing in their first postseason as Lou Pinella really likes the ball club that he headed north with. Pinella, of course, uh, started as skipper of the Mariners last season, has won a World Series with the Reds in 1990. Do the newfangled AL Smythe division set up Buck, as we talked about with just the four teams? Oakland, who has won it, California, who is real young, and Texas, who we must remember, are the Washington Senators. They've never been in the series either. Does that play into Seattle's hands? I think it does. I think Lou Pinella came to Seattle with the idea of not teaching, but winning. He said, hey, I'm here to win. Last year, there were two games over 500, and Pinella has done everything he wanted to accomplish in the spring. They won 21 ball games in spring training, and yeah, that doesn't count, but it means a lot for the momentum. The club believes it can play right now. He's got a real strong starting staff. He's got a 
bunch of young players that catch the ball very well. And any time your team can throw it over the plate and play solid defense, you've got a chance to win a lot of ball games. You like their two through six spots with uh, certainly the batting champ, Edgar Martinez, of a couple years ago, back in the line. If you said they can protect Griffey and Buhner now? Well, last year they were terrible against right-handed pitchers. They had 251 worse than the league. And Edgar Martinez, although he's a right-handed hitter, brings back championship credentials, and he has the ability to really neutralize any dominant right-hander. They are a balanced ball club. They don't have an awful lot of speed, but they're going to hit the ball out of the ballpark and score a lot of runs. The reason you're seeing this long discussion between the two managers uh, and the umpiring crew, Larry Barnett, Greg Kosk, Al Clark, and Dan Morrison, is there's plenty of new ground rules to go over, and we'll get into some of that as the game goes on. There are many that won't come up till later in the year, but the umpires have to know them all, and certainly the managers have to know them all. He'll know them all, Mike Hargrove of the Indians, and not to overstate the situation, but if you consider not only the lengthy years that the Indians have struggled, but everyone knows the story of last season and how Mike Hargrove, just to keep this team together to play any sort of baseball at all, and just to keep the players together and their minds focused on the jobs they have to do, I, I think that was as good a managerial job that we have ever seen. That being said, new division, new hope, now that their minds are just on baseball, do they have a shot to overhaul the White, Hawks, the White Sox? Yeah, I think they do, even though the White Sox have maybe one of the best starting staffs in all of baseball. Cleveland, with their acquisitions in the offseason, and we talked about their abilities to score a lot of runs. They've improved their starters. They have to improve their defense somewhat, but overall, they know they can score runs. They have the emotional uplift of being in this ballpark, and I think you make a very good point about Mike Hargrove. He's a very low-key guy. He's a rock guy in the corner of the dugout. They can always count on him, and when you bring in guys like Eddie Murray and Dennis Martinez and Jack Morris, these guys have won before. So when you get down in August and September and you've got a chance to win, you go to the Murrays and say, Eddie, how are we going to handle these last 35, 40 games? And he will tell you. He will guide them. He is not a leader that will stand in the dugout and say an awful lot. He leads by presence and by his performance on the field. And these young players who are bona fide stars, I mean, let's not underestimate, a lot of the public doesn't know how good Carlos Baerga and Albert Bell are and maybe how good the center fielder Kenny Lofton could be. I mean, he did win a gold glove last year. But having a Murray and a Morris and a Dennis Martinez around with these young guys that we said, and, and a Sandy Alomar Jr., maybe to make it through the whole season injury-free, this is a legitimate club with a legitimate shot. And I think the older players will beat off the new, and the newer ones will beat off the better. I think they've got an awful lot of confidence, and they have what you'd like to see. They, they really like to play for one another. They have a lot of respect for their teammates, and the emergence of the Albert Bells and the Kenny Loftons and the Bayergas, but they're going to do an awful lot. They know they can contend in this league now. Just about time to play ball. Of course, with the added festivities and the president, uh, a slight delay, but heck, it's opening day. You can take all you want. Rich Amaral, the second baseman, will lead it off. Edgar Martinez, the batting champ of 92, batting second and playing third base. Ken Griffey Jr., you know who he is, playing center field, hitting third. Jay Ferris Buner ended up the spring training with a blast. He bats cleanup and is in right field. Eric Anthony, over from the Astros, is in left field. Tito Martinez hit the 17 home runs last year from the first base slot. He is hitting sixth. Reggie Jefferson will DH against the right-handed hitters. Reggie is uh, hitting seven. Dan Wilson, young catcher, play behind Joe Oliver that Lou Pinella knew when he was with the Reds. Wilson hits eighth. And Felix Vermeen, who essentially is shortstop for shortstop trade, Vermeen a Mariner last year, and a, 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 an Indian last year is a Mariner this year. He'll hit ninth against the right-handed Dennis Martinez, returning to the American League. Dennis Martinez, there you see his record last year with the Expos. He signed as a free agent two years plus a club option, and Dennis Martinez makes his seventh consecutive opening day start here. You can see he has good control. Not many walks. He'll throw the ball over the plate. Fastball, he moves to both sides of the plate, always trying to protect that big breaking curveball of his. Got a good off-speed pitch. But what he has done the last several years is he's become more of an intimidator. He knows he has to protect the outside part of the plate, and he'll pitch tough inside. Now two teammates from years gone by, Eddie Murray, Dennis Martinez, talking at the mound. 
know that they were talking about their glory days with the Orioles, but that conversation might come up once or twice this season. They're so fired up here, they even might home plate umpire Larry Barnett a couple of minutes ago and had him yell, let's play ball. 120 in the afternoon, April 4th, 1994. Jacob Spiel, officially personal with Major League Baseball. And how proud everyone in the city feels. Not only the 42,400 here, but everyone in Cleveland waiting for this moment. Rich Amaral steps in, Dennis Martinez to throw. And Kennedy, a strike on the outside corner. Well, you had to know that was going to be a strike. Oh, yep. Everybody was pumped up. Dennis Martinez obviously feels rejuvenated. Come over here. Everybody's really upbeat about the Indians this year. New ballpark has a lot to do with that, but there's an awful lot of talent on that field. Ground ball to second by Erga. Over to Eddie Murray. And there's one out. Viagra makes the first out here. Look at the defense for the Indians. In the outfield, Albert Bell, Kenny Lofton, and rookie Manny Ramirez in right field. This skill and Viagra, great team up the middle. Kenny Lofton with that great range in center field. And Sandy Alomar Jr., the key for the Indians this year is to keep him behind the plate. They need him to catch 135, 140 ball games. He hasn't done that since 1990, his rookie season. Injuries have kept him out of the lineup. So the one down, the third baseman, Edgar Martinez is up, and not a lot of people remember that in 1992 he hit 343, not only did he win the batting championship, but that was the highest total by a batting champ, right-handed hitter, in the American League since Harvey Keene in 1959. Last year, Edgar played only 42 games due to a hamstring injury, so just with him being back, the team is better. And he had a great sprint. Really hit the ball hard. He hits the ball to all fields. Good change that they had him out in front. Eddie Murray will not play first base that often. It's Sorrento, but with the left-handed Johnson going, Murray plays. And oh, by the way, he is now the all-time game leader. Games played at first base. 2,368. Jake Beckley. And there's a shot down the right field line. All right, hard to read the angles yet. We're going to need a few innings. That hung in there a little longer than I thought. It's a foul ball. Anyway, back to Murray. He will now have played more games at first base than anyone else in the history of the major leagues. And they're going to have a ceremony here in about an inning. They're going to pull the base out and give it to him. Were you surprised when you heard that? Yes. I was really surprised. I didn't realize that he was in that category. There's the always dangerous Ken Griffey Jr. on deck. Two balls, two strikes. One out top of the first. Shot foul wide of Sammy Perlazzo. Take a look with Martinez at the plate. Having him back in the lineup is very important. This is the lowest on base percentage of the one and two hitters in 93. The Mariners just three, 30 point, 30 percent of the time on base. But with Martinez back there in that two spot hitting the head of Junior, that's going to mean he's on base an awful lot more runs for the Mariners. Oh, that drilled him. We talked about Martinez trying to protect that outside corner, and that's what he does with that fastball. Watch Edgar dive in there, and it caught him on the wrist. Anytime you get hit around the hand, it's a concern. It's so easy to get a broken finger or a fractured bone in your hand. You can see he was thinking out over the plate trying to protect against that breaking ball, and Martinez, Dennis, ran that ball up and in on Edgar. 88 miles an hour, a little more giddy up than you, you would think from that pitch from Dennis. That fooled Martinez. In the National League, everybody knows Dennis's reputation of coming inside and trying to bust the hitters off the plate and intimidate them. Rupanella will be 
very disappointed if Edgar has a serious injury that keeps him out of the lineup. Disappointed. They were crushed last year when they lost him with that spring training hamstring injury. Well, I mean, that's not the way that Pinella wanted to improve that on-base percentage of the first two spots. Now, here's a couple of pretty good hitters right here. Yeah. Pinella and Murray and Lou looked at Eddie as if to say, yeah, well, what about Dennis out there? I don't know, you know. I got my hitter who almost hit a home run down the right field line to just drifted foul, and then Dennis pumps him inside. That running fastball. Lou's probably saying, well, you know, we got this guy Randy Johnson pitching on our side today, and... Uh, the might have you guys might want to be a little bit alert there. So Martinez is the base runner. The Mariners' first base runner of the 1994 season. There's one out. And Ken Griffey Jr. is up. Leading vote getter last year for all the American League players for the All-Star game. Why? Well, he only had 45 home runs. Led the league in that department, not to mention the slugging department. Had 109 RBIs, hit 309. Junior, buying his first pennant run. That'll be fun if that happens. Let's take a look at the way the defense plays against Ken Griffey Jr. He's got power to all fields, lofting with great speed, just a shade toward the right side. Infield basically straight away. Baerga stepped toward first base. Griffey uses the whole field. It's an adjustment process for the defense playing behind the pitcher for the first time. They know how their former starters would pitch to Griffey, but they've got to learn what Dennis Martinez is going to do to him. Well, an adjustment process because they're playing behind Martinez and in a new park where the balls are hit. The Mariners know the caroms at this point as well as the Indian players do. Yeah, there's no home field advantage for their first couple of series here. Last year against the Indians, the Indians, of course, had the worst pitching in the American League, and Ken Griffey Jr., one of the reasons why. Well, the entire Mariner team hit 316 against Cleveland. Well, he was going to be pretty particular with Ken Griffey Jr. He'll walk him on four pitches. Martinez down to second. Well, so that'll bring up Dave Buehler. I don't think he's any slouch. 27 home runs last year for uh, Jay Ferris Buner, who certainly had no day off. He had 25 the year before and 27 the year before that. So, power, nothing new to this man. And remember, short down the line, 325 down the left field line here at Jacobs Field. That's not that much. Wind going out, although a little bit from left to center. Curveball fouled off. Strike one. You know, I talked to the Mariners about what they expected to see from Dennis Martinez and Ken Griffey Jr. So well, I saw him pitch in Japan during those postseason tours, and I know that he tries to get that curveball over away from the right-handed hitters, and he comes inside. He's got good movement on his fastball. Side, one and one. Two runners on, top of the first, no score. Dennis had an outstanding spring. He really threw the ball well. A little extra giddy up in his fastball. And Mike Hargrove felt that he deserved to pitch here opening day. Way outside and away, ball two, two and one. Buhner enjoys hitting in these newfangled parts. Now, how do you think I'd come up with that? Well, he was the first right-handed hitter to hit it over the scoreboard in right center field at Camden Yard. So keep that in mind, the man has power. Also, oh, by the way, hit one in the old uh, Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, 463 feet. So, 325 down the line, pretty close, and obviously a little too close for Dennis Martinez working low and away. Two and one pitch. Try to sneak it inside. Buhner wasn't buying. It's 3 1. And Dennis will take his time out there. He and Mike Hargrove, his manager, a perfect matchup, aren't they, Buck? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
take them a long time to get things going. Nothing doing, but Edgar had to snap back into second base as Mayerga drifted over. Chilly here yesterday, that's for sure, but the sun out, yeah, you get to wear a sweater or a coat, but it's just perfect. 3-1 pitch, Buhner ahead of a 3-2. Look like Martinez took something off of that pitch, and that's what you get when you get a veteran pitcher like Dennis Martinez. He'll never give in to those power hitters. Take a look at Buhner's swing. Looked like he was out in front of it as it was an off-speed pitch, a little straight changeup that he threw 3-1. You don't do that unless you've got all those innings under your belt. Confidence. Big pitch coming up here. Three and two, two on, one out. Top of the first. Outside, and the sacks are full for one of the newest Mariners, Eric Little Anthony. Came over from the Houston Astros. In a trade this December for Mike Hampton and Mike Tiny Felder. Mike Bargrove watching his new ace, Dennis Martinez, struggle with the bases loaded. Dennis Martinez, seventh consecutive opening day start. Obviously the previous six with the Montreal Expos. It seems like he's thrown about 50 pitches, doesn't it, Buck? Look at pitch over the outside corner for strike. Anthony, of course, faced Martinez when they were both in the National League last several years, so he's got a good idea what Dennis wants to do to him. Rip, but he gets under the ball to right field. Manny Ramirez, the young right fielder. Will make the catch. Here's Edgar Martinez tagging the throw. Comes to second base, and the Mariners lead it one to nothing. Anthony underneath the ball, but here's an example of how the Mariners have yet to amass a base hit. They still have runners on the corners, and they already have one run home. Well, this is the thing that Lou Pinello is trying to impress upon this ball club. Take advantage of the opportunities that the other team gives you. Martinez hit Edgar Martinez with one out. And they move up on the base on balls. And then Eric Anthony gets the fly ball deep enough to right field. you got to cash in those scoring opportunities. Well, this is the first baseman, Tino Martinez. And to steal a line from the Montreal Expos uh, public relations man extraordinaire, Rich Griffin, but what we're seeing this afternoon in Cleveland is clearly a three Martinez lunch with Dennis pitching to Edgar and Tino. I gotta give credit where it's due, Noah. Oh, this one is down the right field line, but it will curve foul. I'll tell you what, he didn't get very much in that buck. Now, if you straighten that out to the foul pole, I, I could have gotten to the wall. My, my point is, 325 is pretty short, especially with the wind blowing out just a tad today. Well, the Indians players who played here on Saturday believe that this will eventually be a hitter's ballpark. The dimensions are very comfortable. Not much foul territory. Fastball up top. And we mentioned that Dennis Martinez made his, he's making his seventh consecutive opening day start. Jack Morris had pitched 14 opening days. 11 with Detroit, one with Minnesota, two with Toronto. He wishes he could be in there, but he's watched Martinez wriggle free as Manny Ramirez squeezes the fly ball by Tino Martinez. The Mariners get on the board, but it could have been worse. Indians coming up. Gentlemen, our attempts to stop the Energizer Bunny have failed. We've got to get his battery. And to do it, we need somebody big. 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 Ah! It's the end of the road, Mr. Energizer Bunny! 
T Plus, the engine treatment with DuPont Teflon protects the heart and soul of your car. The engine without T Plus, your engine faces a daily grind of dry starts, stop and go driving, freezing winds and scorching heat. It's inhuman. But add T Plus one time and your engine becomes a smooth running all with a power machine protected for up to 50,000 miles. So, beat the daily grind and T Plus. The T is for Teflon. What tire do you trust in the wet? A tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The all-season MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. Red Lobster presents the incredible $4.99 lunch. Luscious Maine Lobster, succulent shrimp, together with scallops, all on a bed of linguine. The Lobster Shrimp and Scallop Lunch for just $4.99. So hurry to Red Lobster. On the lakefront in Cleveland, a view of downtown Cleveland, the Gateway Center, and of course, Jacobs Field. A little bit off of Lake Erie, they figure that'll be eight or nine degrees warmer. The breezes won't hit the park first thing off the lake. Here's the lineup of the Indians. Kenny Lofton leads off in center field. Omar Vizquel hits second as a shortstop. Carlos one if by land, two if by sea, three if by erga is the second baseman. It's third. Albert Bell, the cleanup hitter in left field. Eddie Eat, Drink and B. Murray is the first baseman. Candy Maldonado gets the start today against the tough left-hander as a DH. Sandy Alomar Jr. behind the plate hitting seventh. The youngster Manny Ramirez in right field hitting eighth. Mark Lewis, the opening day starter at the third base will hit ninth and they'll go against the strikeout leader in the major leagues last season 19 game winner left-handed six foot ten randy johnson hey 34 starts for the mariners last year and really came into his own he felt he came on and started midway through the 92 season 185 hits in 255 innings that translates into a 203 opponent's batting average he doesn't give up much 308 strikeouts and 99 walks his control has been much better lefty kenny lofton steps in and uh, as you had suspected buck the first pitch a little tight lofton didn't really dig in did he thinking about Edgar Martinez being hit by a pitch. Ball two to Kenny Lofton. Lofton led the major leagues in steals last year with 70. So you know he can run. Hence, Edgar Martinez in on the grass at third base. didn't take long. Randy Johnson works quicker than Dennis Martinez, but uh, it's a four-pitch walk, and Lofton is aboard. Well, that's what they want to do. Lou Pinello doesn't want to see Kenny Lofton on base early in this ball game. He did a good job of keeping it off last year. He just hit 205, but he still stole six bases and wasn't caught. There's his numbers for the season. That'll bring up Omar Vizquel. And there's a new third baseman. So just when Lou Pinella didn't want to see, Edgar Martinez, we don't know if it's precautionary or if it's something serious. We'll get a word. But uh, Mike Blowers is in at third base, replacing Edgar Martinez, who got hit on the wrist by Dennis Martinez's pitch. is 1-0 to Omar Vizquel last year a Seattle Mariner won a gold glove with the Mariners last year so he certainly knows Randy Johnson well and knows that if Johnson gets behind the hitters early it's a struggle for the tallest pitcher ever in the major leagues tallest player ever in the major leagues well one thing about Randy Johnson he can walk the bases loaded but he can strike out the side yes. and strand three runners that blocks and Johnson still can't find the strike zone three and all oh, seven balls from Randy Johnson you pointed out all the numbers last year Buck to me the most impressive for Randy Johnson was 99 walks there's a strike the first strike before that 
the two years previous to last season, Johnson was in the 130-140 range for walks. Matter of fact, he led the American League in 90, 91, and 92 in walks. So he cut that down by 40 or 45 last season. Part of the reason he was so overpowering. There goes the runner. There's the throw on a strike. And whoa! Dan Wilson has just gunned down the stolen base leaders in the Major League from last year, Kenny Lofton. Yowza! What a great throw. Randy Johnson did a good job to help out the catcher. Oh, it's a little slide step. Not much of a move there. Lofton takes a peek at home and right on the money. Good, strong throw, very quick. Take another look at this stolen base attempt by the league leader. There's the throw, a strike to second. The tag at second, he's out easy. Lofton is gone, Vizquel then walked. So with one out, Vizquel aboard. And Carlos Baerga, the all-star second baseman, steps up. Baerga last season and even 200 hits. See his batting average of 321, fifth best in the American League. Two straight years, Baerga had 200 hits. There's only one other second baseman in the history of Major League Baseball to have seasons of uh, 300, 200 hits, 20 homers, and 100 RBIs. And Rogers Hornsby, that's pretty good company for Mr. Baerga. Inside, Baerga whacked at it, fouled it back. Well, the Indians know what they get in the top of the lineup. First four hitters last year provided the majority of the offense. But they feel now, with Bayer in the third spot, followed up by Albert Bell and the addition of Eddie Murray in the fifth spot, and you move down to a healthy Sandy Alomar, Manny Ramirez, a rookie, they might be able to spread the offense throughout the entire lineup. Now the Indians took a big gamble at the end of the 89 season when they traded Joe Carter to the San Diego Padres. <laughs> They got an unknown second baseman named Baerga. They got a known quantity, at least in the minor leagues, of catcher Sandy Alomar Jr. Sandy Joe Carter has gone on to impress in San Diego and in Toronto. There's a ground ball with the runner going. Johnson has to fire over to first. So Vizquel on at second, two out. Albert Bell coming up. Let's check in with Gary. All right, Chris, you had the president at Fenway Park. They had local hero Nancy Kerrigan, and look at that toss. Got it all the way there. The silver medalist got things started, and then the real heat came. Roger Clemens had just struck out Lou Whitaker, strikes out Eric Davis as well, and they are batting in the bottom of the first of a scoreless game. Back to you. All right, Gary, by the way, can we get on the record here and say this? A huge year coming up for Roger Clemens. Oh, yeah. We just know this. He was really frustrated last year. Yeah, well, that won't that's, happen again. No. That's, he's, that's, that's the end of that discussion. He got a tremendous amount of pride. You can bet he's going to have a big year. And if he does, Boston will be in it. No pitcher carries a team like Roger Clemens. Albert Bell went around. Strike one against Randy Johnson. Bell with 38 home runs last year. Led the majors with 129 RBIs. So, again, Bayerga and Bell... These are guys that if they continue what they've been doing, they'll be, they'll be excelling here for a long time. Those are the bleachers. Now oh. ball to third. Blowers. Look at the runner throw off the bat. But Tino Martinez made the tag on Bell. And Randy Johnson wriggles free. We played one at Jacobs Field, one nothing Mariners. Sometimes it's hard to remember I'm not back in Japan. I didn't expect so many Japanese things. Japanese magazines, music, fish pickles. This woman even called me in Japanese. To welcome me to my phone club. With MCI's friends around the world, we call you in your language to check that you're getting our lowest international rates. She made sure I was getting their best savings. It's hard to be so far from home. This is a different country, but I don't feel like I'm a stranger here. Join friends around the world anytime. The easiest way to call, the easiest way to save. Hurry, right, girls, before Daddy gets up. Ooh, ready. Hmm. Now, no more. These are Daddy's corn pops. Oh, look. Daddy's bowl is too full. The problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, mm. is that it disappears mm. like popcorn, mm. only faster. Mommy, that's Daddy's. We share. Hi, girls. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thanks, guys. Now, let's all go make him breakfast. Mm -hmm. 
Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's Pops. And here is Henry Aaron. This crowd is up all around. The only thing I wanted to do was hit that home run and get it out of the ballpark. I think that's going to be a record to stand for a long time. He said, meet me at the ballpark, Mama. He said, I'm going to break the record tonight. He's sitting on 7-14. Swinging. There's a drive into left center field. That's Hank Aaron went on to hit 755 home runs. A message from Major League Baseball. We're back here at Cleveland. one nothing Mariners in the top of the second, and we told you Eddie Murray made history on this afternoon. They yanked first base out and gave it to him. Why, you say? God, he's only been a Cleveland Indian for one inning. He gets a souvenir from Jacob Field. Well, there's a very good reason. At first base, Murray has now played 2,369 games. Jake Beckley from the 1890s and through 1907 played for Pittsburgh, the Giants, Cincinnati Reds, and St. Louis Cardinals had the old record. Lou Gehrig, I figured just that he would have the record. And Lou Gehrig is fourth on that list, as you saw, with Mickey Vernon third. So, Eddie Murray, yes, he has been around that long, and yes, he will uh, wire the field. Count is 0-2 to the leadoff man here in the top of the second inning. Reggie Jefferson, Cleveland Indian last year, went over the Vizquel trade. Jefferson and Fermin for Vizquel, and they're all here reunited on this April afternoon. Jefferson will be the DH primarily for Luke Pinello's club against the right-handers. Mike Blowers will be the DH against the left-handed pitcher. That's his early plan this season. Curveball, slap, foul. Part of this new ballpark here in Jacobs Field, there are suites, yes, up top, but there are special dugout suites. Twelve seats to a suite. Six seats in the front, six seats in the second row, and you can look right in from one of them into the respective team's dugouts. I mean, you talk about being close to the action. Those seats, Buck, are less than 60 feet, six inches away from home plate. Those fans are closer to the batter than the pitcher is. Now, that's unbelievable. Well, they'll be able to hear the umpire and the catcher talking to the hitters and hearing the pitchers questioning the umpire. Where was that pitch? <laughs> Great experience down here. We got a good look at those seats. Right down at ground level. To the pitch to Reggie Jefferson off speed. He held off and the count is full. Jefferson is uh, somebody that Lou Pinella knew. He was with Cincinnati in 1990, lose first year. He did not go around, and Dennis Martinez' control problems continue. Always under the control. Chris, we take you to Yankee Stadium. The first inning rally against the Rangers' Kevin Brown. They'd already scored a run on a sack fly. Wade Box had stolen second base in the double steal. Now he's going to really try the speed against Juan Gonzalez. He is meat. The Yankees did get a run out of it. Jimmy Key's got a 1-0 lead. He shut him out again in the second. They're batting in the second. Back to you. Gary Jefferson on first base. Dan Wilson, the former Cincinnati Red, the catcher bunts it. Martinez takes a look at second, but did not have the time. Danny Martinez bobbled that. He had the right idea on his mind. He got to it quickly. He's a very good fielder. He came off the mound in a hurry, got to the ball, but he bobbled it. That allowed Dan Wilson to advance the runner. Take a look at it. Not a great bunt. Wilson bunts it right back to the mound and pretty hard. But look at Martinez. He gets to it. He's thinking about second, but then he bobbles it momentarily. And once he does that, he has to take the sure out at first. So the Mariners with a runner in scoring position. Wilson was impressed, gunning out uh, Kenny Lofton, laying the sacrifice down. And the number nine hitter, Felix the Cat for me. Swing it at the first pitch, it's the center field, but Lofton is there. Makes the grab, Jefferson back to second base, two out. You know, that's what happens when you hit against your former team. They know how to play you perfect. Kenny Lofton was right there in his tracks to take the line drive. For me, hit it right on the nose, but right at the center fielder. Felix Fermin came to the Mariners. Omar Vizquel, they swapped shortstops. Vizquel, the 93 gold glove shortstop. 
has a little bit more range. They're both very sure-handed. But Vizquel, he can really cover the ground, particularly when they play on artificial surfaces around the league. Second baseman, Rich, protect your car with Amaral. Steps up, and now Martinez over with a strike. Seems like he needed a, a batter to swing at the first pitch and get him going, and now he, now he seems a little more rhythm these last few pitches. It really takes a pitcher a while to get comfortable on a mound and think about it. This is the first time Martinez has thrown off this mound. And he likes to work to the corners. It's going to take him a few pitches to get his sights set. Pitch outside for a ball. It's one and one. The Mariners lead it one nothing. They scored their run without a hit. A hit batter. A pair of walks and a sack fly by Eric Anthony. Richie Jefferson the lead off second base. Side fastball snap Amaral back. Sandy Alomar Jr. had back surgery last year. He's 6'5, but look at how he's able to really get down and give a great target. He moves inside there. Look how solid that target is. That glove looks like a bullseye in the middle of a target. If he can stay healthy and give them 135, 140 games behind the plate, their defense will improve dramatically. Two one pitch to Amaral, slug but down, foul down the left field line, wide of third base. Mark Lewis over there. The Indians have a uh, dilemma at third. Not really a dilemma. They're looking for some sharp fielding. Lewis, uh, former number one pick, gets the start today because of left-hand pitcher Johnson. But they would like Jim Tomey, who hits great at third, but fields fields okay, catches okay. But Tommy, can you hear me? When he throws the ball to first base, too many wild throws. So third base a potential problem spot for the drive. They have a pretty decent third baseman in uniform today. Buddy Bell, who was their infield instructor. Yeah, he, he looked at me and he was warming <laughs> up before the game. He said, where are we? We're, this is here? He's so excited to see this new park, the city where he played for so many years. Full count to Amaral. Bob's breaking ball is outside, and Dennis Martinez has walked his fourth batter. You know, the Mariners are showing an awful lot of patience. Martinez really hasn't been that wild. He's been around the plate, but I think this is another indication of just how much influence Lou Pinella as a former hitter and a good one has had on this particular young team by saying listen be more patient you know the pitcher's got to throw it over the plate don't give him too much credit get up there and get your pitch take the walks you know you don't have to hit home runs every time those walks work into runs as well if you like hits you're tuning into the wrong game we've yet to have the first hit at jacobs field if you like base runners you love this game there have been 14 batters Seven have reached base, six by a walk, one by a hit pitch. That was Edgar Martinez. He got hit by in the wrist, and so this man, Mike Flowers, is up. Had to replace Martinez at third base. We'll get a report to you as soon as we can. Here's the pitch, Buck. It's a fastball that really tails in. Martinez, during that at bat, hit a drive down the right field line. It just drifted out of play. It may have had enough distance to reach the seats. But then Dennis Martinez came up and in and caught Edgar on the wrist. We haven't heard as yet his status. But they took him out of the game after that first at bat. There's a snapping fastball. It's one and two to Blowers. Well, he didn't want to monkey around with Blowers with Griffey on deck. That's for sure. Yeah, he wants to get out of this inning here. He's got two outs and wants to go right after Mike Blowers. You don't want to have base runners on deck for Griffey Jr. Jefferson is at second. Amaral at first. The one-two pitch. Shot the first. And the veteran first baseman, Eddie Murray, makes the play. And the Mariners are stymied. Eddie Murray leads off for the Tribe when we return. Polish a whole car in about half the time with new Turtle Wax Instant Foam and Shine. The first foaming car polish. It's so much easier. With ordinary polish, you have to wipe, wait, and rub. 
With new Instant Foam and Shine, you just foam and shine. A mirror-like shine with long-lasting turtle wax protection. It's never been easier or faster. So why wait? Polish your car in about half the time with new Turtle Wax Instant Foam and Shine. A friendly warning about the ultimate meat combo pizza from Pizza Hut. You know, this pizza changed my life. A meat taste so big, everything else will seem small. I used to love a thick, juicy steak. Now it seems like a little order. Big, thick slices of pepperoni. Two kinds of Italian sausage. And burgers taste downright microscopic. This taste is so big. It even makes my whole herd of prime beef seem my puny. The ultimate meat combo pizza from Pizza Hut. One bite, and there's no going back. It's time to catch spring fever at Napa, the place more people rely on to keep their vehicles running and to help them save. Get Napa gas shocks and struts. Buy one and get the second one for half price. Spring is the perfect time for this handy eight-piece cooler combo, just $18.99. And easy-to-use no-touch tire care. Buy one for just $2.99 and get the second one free. So spring into your nearest Napa Auto Parts store today. Candlestick Park. Barry Bonds of the San Francisco Giants, a team that won 103 games last year, but yet were not playing baseball in October. They plan to play it deep into October this year. They start their run against the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's following our game here, which is the bottom of the second. The Mariners lead the Indians 1-0, and Eddie Murray sends a fly ball off Randy Johnson to right field, which uh, Jay Buhner first had trouble with in the sun. And it made the play. Well, Eddie Murray got under a fastball and lifted it to right field. And Jay Buhner is a very good outfielder, but he was uncomfortable with this ball. Watch him track it. He, he has his sights on it then, and then the wind takes it back toward the wall, and he has to drift back to the wall. That's the report I got from the Indians about fly balls on Saturday when they played the Pirates here in exhibition. The winds really swirl around here, and you're really unsure of which direction they're headed. Candy Maldonado, World Series hero for the Toronto Blue Jays in 1992. Remember that game three, the first game ever played north of the border. Ex uh, bottom of the ninth inning off Jeff Reardon, base hit. Gave the Blue Jays the win and a 2-1 lead in the series. They would eventually win. He has another guy who is uh, on the Cleveland Indians team that's had plenty of postseason experience. Candy Maldonado, the Giants, and of course the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, we show these lights because you see their vertical lights, they look different. But there's much less of a chance, Buck, of a fielder losing the ball in the lights. They'll get out of there in a hurry. That's not the real reason why they built them that way, but the fielders all have applauded that. And you can see, they get off plenty of light. It's more to, you see nearby bridges outside of the stadium, and it's more to keep architecturally the sight lines of where the ballpark is downtown. But the fringe benefit is that. A diving play at second base by Amaral over to Martinez, and the Candyman is gone. Well, we talked about the Mariners in their leading defense last year, committed just 90 errors. Rich Amaral moves in as the everyday second baseman. Maldonado hits the fastball sharply on the ground. Amaral goes to his left, gloves it, knows he's got a little time with Maldonado running, throws from his knees for the out. Gives the pitchers an awful lot of confidence when you've got that good defense behind you. Put it in play. Sandy Alomar looks at strike one from Randy Johnson. The report on Edgar Martinez, as we'd hoped, precautionary x-rays of the right wrist. When those reports become available, we'll let you know. Flowers is in at third. So Edgar Martinez back for half an inning this season. Slap wide of first base, past first base coach Davey Nelson down the right field line. Sandy Alomar was rookie of the year in 1990 when he first came over from the Mariners. You can see he's not had a whole lot of fun facing Randy Johnson. Not many hitters do. 
308 strikeouts. And now Johnson is in the position where he understands how he's going to stay in the strike zone. He has really modified his mechanics. Kept his delivery compact. But getting back to Alomar, it's a situation where Sandy, coming back from back surgery last year, really feels physically fit. And here's a guy that played 51 games in 91, 89 games in 92, 64 games in 93, been hurt. Johnson working him outside again. That one was a breaking ball that missed it. two and two. Two outs, the base is clear, bottom of the second inning. One nothing Mariners. Sack fly by Eric Anthony. Still waiting for the first hit here at Jacobs Field. Now back off the facade of the fourth deck. Kind of a that sounds like it's it's hit a monster shot. Low sight lines here. Most every seat close to the action. Again, if you tune in late capacity, 42,400. It's a far cry from the, what, 75, 76,000 in the Municipal Stadium. Sawed him off. Amaral to Martinez. And Alomar is gone. When we return, Ken Griffey Jr. and the Mariners will stride to the plate, leading one up. If Burger King had just one customer, we'd have just one way to serve the number one preferred burger. But since you come in more than one size, so does the flame broiled Whopper. Like the new Whopper Junior, with more beef than before. Or double Whopper, with more beef than you believe. There's a Whopper taste for any size appetite from the everyday value of 99 cents. Whopper meals from 199. We don't have to be the world's number one fast food place. Just yours, and yours, and yours. Welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? Polaroid camera if there's no picture. The Polaroid Captiva. The pictures stay in till you take them out. Maybe if you shake it. Yeah, shake the camera. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. What tire do you trust in the wet? A tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The all-season MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. ESPN's presentation of Major League Baseball is brought to you by Michelin. Because so much is riding on your tires. Nothing Seattle, top of the third inning in the Goodyear blimp spirit of Akron. It's floating overhead, providing our aerial views of the action on the field and of this beautiful brand new ballpark. The Goodyear blimps have been flying over major sporting events for over 68 years and had a short commute today from Akron to Cleveland, and we are glad that they helped us out. And just a beautiful day that everyone here will remember for a long, long time. Ken Griffey Jr. walked on four pitches his first time up. This time he swings at an off-speed delivery from Dennis Martinez and fouls it back. Dennis came out in this ball game maybe with a little bit too much adrenaline. He was missing. You can see now he's starting to catch up with the strikes. He was walking hitters, putting runners on base. Eventually, the batter that he hit, Martinez, scored the only one in the ball game. Good breaking ball over that Griffey took for a strike. And so Dennis this time ahead of Griffey, 0-2. Missed a little bit inside, 1-2. Well, that's a pretty good pitch. He had good movement on that ball. You could see that it froze Griffey Jr. And then there was enough movement to bring it back toward the plate. Larry Barnett, the umpire, felt that it was inside, but that was a pretty good pitch. Again. Struck him out. So 
A little bit different this time around for Dennis Martinez against Ken Griffey Jr. I think what happened there, Ken Griffey Jr. was expecting something outside, and Martinez went back to back with inside fastballs. Missed with the first one, but then finds the mark. You can see it was a very tentative swing by Jr. He was trying to bring his hands in and just foul that ball off to stay alive, but he couldn't make any contact. That's interesting because Junior expected Dennis to throw him soft pitches to the inside part of the plate and nothing hard. So already he's been crossed up by the wily veteran Martinez. Well, Dennis has crossed up a few hitters in his 18th year now in the major leagues. Here's Jay Buhner who walked his first time up. First strikeout registered at Jacobs Field by Dennis Martinez against Ken Griffey Jr. Still waiting for that first hit. First RBI goes to Eric Anthony. First run score to Martinez. Take a look at Martinez's delivery. Really difficult to find the ball with that big high leg kick and how he cups his body. You know, last year he got off to a slow start, one and four in April, but then he really came on to finish 15 and nine. And he's really been encouraged. Look at those numbers just a handful of pitchers to win 100 games in both the National League and the American League. Ground ball to short. This Kel. Murray. Two down. Now the open air concourses here. There's the bakery and the food. And you see from where you go buy your food, your beverage, etc., you can still hear, you can still see the action. You don't go down a portal in the third inning to get a hot dog and then miss two innings of the game. Really well thought out for the fans. Also here down that right field line, here from where you saw the shot come from, as Eric Anthony looks at ball one. Some of the seats have been angled 8 to 12 degrees toward the plate. That's so that crick in your neck at the end of a nine-inning game is a little bit less. They liked it so much at Camden here. This one's hit the right field. Back goes Manny Ramirez. It's gone! The first hit. The first home run. And the only two RBIs thus far in the history of Jacobs Field for Eric Anthony. The first baseman, two nothing Mariners. Martinez. Well, they expect Anthony to give them a little more pop to neutralize tough right-handed hitters. And take a look at this swing. It's that fastball that drifted out over the plate about letter high, and he ripped it. Only question about that ball was whether or not it was high enough to clear the fence. Anthony doesn't have traditional home run hitter trajectory on most of the balls he hits hard. They're real rockets, line drives, and that one got out of here. Tito Martinez flew out to right his first time up. The crowd had a feeling that was going to be a home run ball. That ball just doesn't seem to need to be drilled down the right field line. That's our early observation. Murray handles it. Tina Martinez is gone. But Eric Anthony, he's been imperial thus far. 2-0 Mariners. A Vander Holyfield. A warrior. More. The Destroyer. The Champion. Courageous. The Challenger. Nasty. Holyfield versus More. Will versus Power. Do you want to exercise but find you cannot stand too long or touch your toes? If the answer is yes, then exercise along with Frankie Vale for 30 minutes while sitting in your chair. Order your videotape today for only $14.95. 
Send check or money order to FTS Enterprises, Post Office Box 1196, Manahawkin, New Jersey, 08050, or call area code 609-597-8539. It can help you experience a game that's better all around. Get the 8 Ways to a Better Golf Game video. It's guaranteed to improve your game. And it's free with your paid subscription. Order 12 issues of Golf Digest for just $19.77 now and get the latest video free. Call 800-255-2800. That's 800-255-2800. A black hawk makes you look up in the tree. The blues make you feel down in the dumps. You like up and down hockey? You got it. The Chicago Blackhawks versus the St. Louis Blues. Tomorrow at 8.30. NHL and ESPN2. Back at the bottom of the third inning, the Cleveland crowd quiet thus far as uh, Eric Anthony has uh, been the hitting star. Sack fly and his first home run as a Mariner. Seattle and Randy Johnson lead the Indians 2-0 here in the bottom of the third. The extra Manny Ramirez, who was Baseball America's Minor League Player of the Year last year, came up for 22 games in September with Cleveland, hit two home runs both uh, at Yankee Stadium, same game. Flies to Buner, and there's one out here in the Indians' third inning. Not Randy Johnson uh, walked his first two guys that he's faced, but has retired all the other Indians. The things turned around for Randy in the middle of the last year. Yes, he had a, a, a talk with Nolan Ryan, but on July 23rd, he had an outing that bothered his manager, Lou Pinella. We'll talk about that in a moment. And Johnson was a different pitcher after July 23rd, an outing at Fenway Park. Actually, the outing to the 23rd was in Fenway right. Park against the Red Sox when he had a lead and they coughed it up but then against the Indians on the 23rd an inning of the third his shortest outing in his career and after that game he had a discussion with Lou Pinella and Pinella challenged Randy Johnson to really work a little harder to try to improve upon his conditioning and stamina so he could take that 95 mile an hour fastball late into the season and Johnson himself felt like he had always worked hard, but Lou said, yeah, you've you got to be more dominant. If you work hard, maintain your conditioning, you can use that fastball in the middle of the plate. You can challenge hitters late through the season, and the consistency of those numbers that you saw prove that that paid off for him. Count is two and two for Randy Johnson against Mark Lewis. A pitch ago, clocked at 96 miles an hour. Lewis. Randy, because you equate a, a fastball pitcher to a maybe a long hitter in golf, so he's the pitcher's equivalent to John Daly's grip it and rip it on the mound. <laughs> he gets the ball, he fires it back. Well, he, he has a kind of fastball that makes Sammy Ellis excited. Would love to have... Well, he may not look it right there, but he is excited. <laughs> Trust me. He is very excited about Randy Johnson and what he has done the last couple of seasons. You know, you have a pretty good idea Johnson's going to give you that fastball, but tough to catch up to him. Last year on opening day against the Blue Jays, with the three best hitters in the league, Johnson struck out 14 for Luke Minnell. Well, in his career, Johnson, 1,126 strikeouts going into the season in 1,073 innings. So that's more than one an inning. Johnson will handle the weak tapper by Lewis and flip over to first base with his two outs. Chris mentioned that Randy Johnson had a conversation with Nolan Ryan about pitching and mechanics. Take a look at his delivery. Remember, he's 6'10". And watch how well he's balanced and how he finishes up. Squared to the plate. Right there, he's in a real good fielding position. Gets the little tapper back to the mound. But he says that that visit with Nolan and Tom House about not only pitching, but about the mechanics of throwing the ball really helped him understand that if he finishes up more balanced, he will be more consistent. Kenny Lofton up, he walked his first time up and was caught stealing by the catcher Dan Wilson. Flowers in on the grass at third. 
More on Randy Johnson. His 308 strikeouts last year led the major leagues by far. The next most was Jose Rio with 227. So he really lapped the field. Only nine pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball have registered more than Johnson's 308 strikeouts last year. And there's a strikeout for the strikeout leader, Randy Johnson. Another 1-2-3 inning for Johnson and the Mariners, who lead it 2-0. No two people are exactly alike. Hi. While Bob likes the high gloss shine of original Armor All Protectant, Fred prefers new low gloss Armor All with the rich, deep finish. I gotta be me. Either way, it's your choice. Only from Armor All. A brain inside a head in Ohio is studied by a surgeon in Tokyo. A mother's face in France appears on a telephone in New York. A virtual journey to any moment in time. The possibilities are endless. Wilson Conform is the best fitting glove I ever had. This dial fit system makes the leather conform to your hand. The only way leather fits better is on a cow. And I'm not playing with a cow in my hand. <laughs> Conformed by Wilson, the way leather's supposed to fit. No offense, Bessie. You can feel the heat. 1,100 degrees. Intense heat. The hottest. We asked some of the hottest guys in town to trade their deodorant for new degree deodorant. Body heat activated. Let's give it a shot. As your body heat rises, only degree releases extra protection against odor. When I heat up, deodorant's gonna kick in. Works far better than speed stick. Kicked in for me. Switch to the stick that's body heat activated. Uh, I want to stick to degree. I'd use it. This stuff works. Absolutely. Cool as ice. New degree deodorant for a higher degree of protection. Back here at Jacobs Field, where the only hitting has been done by the Seattle Mariners. Eric Anthony, solo home run, also has a sack fly. 2-0 Seattle, and swing at the first pitch, former Indian Reggie Jefferson. Vizquel to Murray, there's one out. Let's check in with Gary Miller. All right, Chris Fenway Park, where Clemens has been mowing him down. Mike Moore against Andre Dawson. With authority. The Hawk had 13 last year. Hits one in his first at bat this year. Mike Moore led the majors last year with 35 gopher balls. Back to you. The Hawk still going strong. Remember the 400 home run club, Andre Dawson. This is Dan Wilson, the young catcher who sacrificed in the first inning. Uh, Wilson in Cincinnati, that's where Pinola was impressed by him, so when they had an opportunity to bring him over here, they went out and got him and made an outstanding throw to nail Kenny Lofton in the first inning. They talk about, well, he doesn't hit much, but let me tell you, with the confidence that he will gain as the everyday catcher, that hitting might come around. Watching that home run by one of our favorite people in the game, Andre Dawson, his home run number 413. There are only five guys that have over 400 homers and are not in the Hall of Fame. Obviously, Dawson, one of them, still playing. Eddie Murray here, still playing. Darrell Evans at 414 is going to have a tough time, as will Dave Kingman at 442. Dave Winfield at 453, and Mike Schmidt, 548. Well, when Schmidt is eligible, I think he might get in. Look at the shortstop play and step toward the hole there against Wilson. Skied on the outfield grass. Vizquel takes charge. Calls off by Erga. Drifts behind second base and makes the play. There's two outs. You know, and I want to take a, a personal moment here if I can. I don't do this very often, but I would like to wish my mother-in-law, a very dear lady, Alice Alexinski, who underwent about a nine or ten hour liver transplant operation yesterday afternoon and yesterday night. I want to wish her a speedy recovery. She's planning to watch this game. Don't know whether she's able to today, but we love you, Mom. 
Yeah. Speedy recovery. And lose, uh, Easter Sunday. Huh? Yeah, Easter Sunday. Lose uh, Lou Pinella's son. Son Derek, 15 right. today. Lou was playing in New York. His youngest son. Wanted to wish him a happy birthday. And it's opening day. You're allowed to do these things. Felix, for me, the count is 0-1. And, and Martinez snaps that one outside. 1-1. One 2-0 one. here. The Mariners lead it. Bottom of the third inning. Kind of a quiet crowd. All sorts of anticipation. The president on hand. Unveiled the plaques. Here's a... Murray knocks it down. Can he scramble to it? Oh, he almost takes Dennis's head off and fires it wide. So Fermin gets to the bag in time. And we'll see how they score. Tough play for Eddie Murray, but yet a play that he's often made. They'll give him an error, Buck. Yeah, and I think he'll agree with that. You can see he was right there in front of it. He had a good shot at it. Let's take a look at the play here. Fermin hit a shot. But Murray got over to it, actually hit on the heel of his glove, and then it went into foul ground. He was scrambling for it, and he wheels and fires, but it's wide of the mark at first base. Well, Martinez is there, but you can see that it is off the mark, and Fermin reaches base with Eddie Murray's air. Beautiful afternoon here in Cleveland. And a fan on the field, so they escort her off. They bounce her out of the stadium, and we'll get back to action. Don't forget, this is the first of a double dip here on ESPN. It's the Pirates. Andy Van Slyke, a big spring after his injury-riddled season last year. And Barry Bonds, what sort of season does he have in store this year in San Francisco? I'd say last year was pretty good. I'll tell you what kind of season he thinks he has in store. A World Series season. He hasn't had one of those. Well, the Dodgers will have a lot to say about that in the National League West. Well, they uh, clear the field, and uh, Dennis Martinez has been warming up. And we return to action. Vermeen on in the air, and leadoff hitter Rich Hammer all up. It's the fourth inning. He's already been up three times. Granted a second has walked. Top Amaral showed bunt, pulled it back. Canada's 1-0. Well, that's a pretty good idea by Amaral because he's got Mark Lewis playing third base today. Lewis is a natural shortstop. He didn't play third base last year. So he took a peek down at third. Now Lewis has come in a couple of steps and has shortened up. So Mark Lewis isn't really that comfortable over there. pinella has got to be pleased with the way Amaral's thinking at the plate. Rich Amaral from Basalia, California, went to school at UCLA eight years in the minors before he finally made the big show. And you like to see guys like this succeed. 83 to 90 in the minor leagues where he stole 327 bases. He's not going to be a big base stealing threat here. Has 19 last year. Could steal 25 to 30. Perseverance. Always a nice story when it pays off. Well, the one thing about a guy like Amaral, who played so many games in the minor leagues, is he understands the value of advancing a runner, using the bunt, keeping an inning alive with a two-out bunt down the third base line. These are the intangibles that Lou Pinella loves to have on his ball club. Remember, Pinella's used to playing on championship-caliber ball clubs. That's what he did as a player in the heyday with the Yankees. So he knows that he's going to have to have some of the rich Amarols come through with the fundamentals of the game to win. And Griffey Jr., he's going to hit the home runs, and Randy Johnson's going to get the strikeouts, but you've got to have guys like Rich Amaral produce and be productive for you to win. Who 
working on that gum. Sees his club up two to nothing here. And Amaral has worked the count to three and zero against Dennis Martinez, who has struggled with control today. That's in there for a strike. Martinez walked two in the first, two in the second. Has not walked anyone since, but is in danger of doing it right here. Dennis Martinez, a model of consistency with the Expos. Who started off as a fine pitcher for the Orioles, had some problems, really righted himself in Montreal, and really became a favorite up there. Well, he had that perfect game against the Dodgers out in California. Yeah, that'll make you a favorite. Different move there. For me, has to dive back in first. Martinez has won 208 games in his career. The most he's ever won is 16. He's done that on four different occasions. Twice with the Orioles, twice with the Expos. There goes the runner. Ball is sky to left field where Albert Bell makes the catch. Amaral and the Mariners are retired. Heading to the bottom of the fourth inning. Bayerga and company need to do some work at the plate. Polaroid asked me, send that in these supermodels to demonstrate the sleek, stylish Captiva camera. It holds the pictures inside the camera's special pocket till you take them out and put them in a, your pocket. <laughs> My pocket. <laughs> the Polaroid Captiva. Airbag seat belts and anti-lock brakes. Child safety seats, careful driving, and a set of Michelins. Red Lobster presents the incredible $4.99 lunch. Luscious Maine Lobster, succulent shrimp, together with scallops, all on a bed of linguine. The Lobster Shrimp and Scallop Lunch for just $4.99. So hurry to Red Lobster. Introducing a Honda that's not roomy, comfortable, or economical. Mind you, it is quick, though. See you at Indy. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Bottom of the fourth here at Jacobs Field. First major league regular season game ever. Here and being enjoyed, and he really is enjoying himself. President Clinton on hand, taking all sorts of pictures, signing autographs. So if the president is here, you know his cabinet cannot be far away. And somewhere up there, yes, is Secretary of Defense <laughs> and Secretary of Offense. <laughs> Chris Berman and Buck Martinez with you. And we're glad... Uh, yeah, the president decided to drop by and, yeah, and talk to us about He's the, having a good day here. He's going from here to Charlotte. Omar Vizquel, Carlos Baerga, Albert Bell, 2-3-4 against Randy Johnson. This, by the way, for your trivia buffs, is the first time that the Mariners have ever played in front of the president of the United States. They have entertained royalty before. Hit by Vizquel to left field. Eric Anthony's there and squeezes it. Last June, well, I'll tell you the story in a minute. Here's Gary Miller. Chris Ticker to Yankee Stadium. Paul O'Neill's two-run double gave Jimmy Key a 3-0 lead. Now Will Clark in his Ranger debut, and he rips a double into the right field corner. That's Chris James coming around to score to break the shutout. Rangers have broken into Key. It's 3-1 Yanks, though. Back to you. Gary, thank you. There's one out here in Carlos Baerga, who nubbed one back to the mound his first time up. Well, we told you that the president on hand here, the closest the Mariners have ever come to playing in front of a president before. Last June, they played in front of the Prime Minister of Mongolia. 
they won that game. They're hoping that Clinton can bring the same sort of luck. Now, how would you find that out? I, hey, I called the far reaches of this park for this <laughs> Don't ask me to explain how you throw a curveball, but I can tell you that the Mariners are 1-0 with the Prime Minister of Mongolia. You didn't know that, did you? Did you think uh, he probably knew what a hit and run was? <laughs> I, I, I doubt it. Baerga is out. For me, to Tino Martinez, and this will bring up Albert Bell. You gotta have a dog when you're at the park. You have to have one. No better fare. I'm sure we'll get the report tonight on Jacobs Fields hot dogs. That's right, Jacobs Fields hot dog. The, the, maybe we're the secretary of food, of agriculture at least. Albert Bell who can go deep, Randy Johnson who can throw deep. Classic matchup of power against fastball. Cleveland fans waiting for the first Indian hit against Randy Johnson. Look at Johnson talking to himself, talking about getting his arm up. Look at how many 90 mile an hour pitches he's thrown today. 11 in the third inning. He's really locked in. You know, I think both of these starters today showed some effects of opening day. Their routine was disrupted. First pitch ceremonies, the president coming out here, Dennis Martinez warmed up and then sat down and then warmed up again. And then he came out and walked for him. Andy Johnson walked the first two batters he faced. So I think now they're both starting to be more comfortable on the mound. But anytime a starter has his natural routine disrupted it has a tendency to throw them off kilter Andy Johnson was here yesterday talking about already preparing for this start today didn't want to be distracted and is two and two to Albert Bell Johnson walked the first two batters he faced has retired everyone since oh, right through the wickets of Tino Martinez Bell is aboard. It won't be a hit, obviously. But the Indians with their first base runner since the first inning. Power versus power. You pitch to a guy like Albert Bell. Does that worry Randy Johnson? It's a tip of the hat when they get a base hit or a home run off you, but you have to go with your strength. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go up against a lot of fastball hitters but I'm a fastball pitcher, so it, I kind of like that confrontation. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And so uh, you learn from your mistakes, hopefully, and uh, you know you capitalize on your, uh, your achievements. Well, a mistake by the first baseman, Tino Martinez, who gets the air. Each first baseman has an air. And so now Johnson has to be particular with Eddie Murray. Count as 1-0. Murray needs only 180 hits to get to the 3,000 mark. I mean, that, that's something when you're also talking about a guy 21st on the home run list, 441, 17th on the RBI list, 1662. His next home run will tie him with Dave Kingman at 442 for 20th. At this point, the Indians would just like a safety of any sort against Randy Johnson. The count is two and one. Two out, runner at first. Well, what Eddie Murray does for this lineup is he provides legitimate protection for Albert Bell. 17 years, Eddie Murray has driven in 75 runs or more. He's a switch hitter, so you don't have to worry about righty or lefty. Ground ball to short. Fermin over to Amaral. And the Indians are done. Randy Johnson continues to overmatch the Cleveland Indians. We'll be back. Just let me roll with you, baby, and roll you all over town. In my day, they didn't pay you much to bring in the crowds, score the winning point, or win a championship. You played because it was in your blood. Oh. 
Palm Beach Blazer of Champions. Some guys never lose it. So roll on, baby. Roll on over town. Energizer battery. It keeps going and four four one. No, no, that's not it. Four five one. Nah, no, that's that stupid screen pass. I can't remember the number. I better call an audible. <clears throat> call Candace. So Steve, you got the tickets? Okay, Candace. Here's the deal. I got five on the forty for the fourteenth. Three on the fifteenth. He's 15th so the 30th, good with six numbers. Six on the forty for the fourteenth. Call now for the revolutionary voice-activated phone card, only from Sprint. Polish a whole car in about half the time with new Turtle Wax Instant Foam and Shine, the first foaming car polish. It's so much easier. With ordinary polish, you have to wipe, wait, and rub. With new Instant Foam and Shine, you just foam and shine. A mirror-like shine with long-lasting Turtle Wax protection. It's never been easier or faster. So why wait? Polish your car in about half the time with new Turtle Wax Instant Foam and Shine. Back at Cleveland, top of the fifth inning and swinging at the first pitch and dropping in a base hit. Mike Blowers, guy that didn't even know he'd be playing today, but Edgar Martinez was hit on the wrist in the first inning. Blowers went into the bottom of the first inning to play third base. And Blowers is aboard with just the second hit of the afternoon. April showers bring Mike Flowers. I don't know, but it does bring Ken Griffey Jr. up to the plate. He's walked and struck out against Dennis Martinez. 2-0. Mariners. Top of the fifth. way out in front of that one. Interesting this at bat when you think back last time up Ken Griffey Jr. was fooled by Dennis Martinez. 0-2 count Dennis missed inside with the fastball but came right back with the same pitch and got Griffey swinging. He was really expecting something away from it. Just watch how this sequence plays itself out. That time he came with the curveball inside. So right now, Dennis Martinez is doing a number on Ken Griffey's head. Griffey's the only man that he struck out this afternoon, Buck. Foul the back. You know what's interesting is that, I mean, for, for Randy Johnson, to have this mastery and yet to allow a hit, but yet to have struck out only one himself through four innings is off. Well, I think that's how come he has become a winning pitcher now. He knows that he has to throw his breaking ball over. He can't just rear back and try to strike everyone out. I think he understands pitching, and he credits Nolan Ryan with a lot of that thought process. A little number in front of the plate. Alomar will throw it on to Murray. Grippy is gone. Blowers down to second base, so there's one out. Another good sequence called by Alomar. Griffey's frustrated, fires his helmet. He got that little tapper out in front of the plate. He was sitting on something a little bit harder inside, and Dennis went back door with an off-speed breaking ball and got the little tapper in front of the plate. You know, that's all you try to do as a pitcher, to disrupt the timing of the hitters. Keep them off guard. Don't ever let them sit on one speed of pitch. And Martinez is the master of changing speeds both on his fastball and his breaking pitch. Jay Buhner has walked and grounded to shortstop. 2-0. Seattle leads Cleveland here in the top of the fifth of the debut of Jacobs Field. President Clinton on hand. 
There are 42,400 seats, and I think there are 42,400 Secret Service agents who have accompanied the president here today. So maybe they needed the old park for at least today if the president was going to show up. Into center field, Kenny Lofton drifts over. Makes the catch, throw comes in quickly, nothing doing. Well, our Wahoo cam, as we're going to call it, our moving camera, is in the Terrace Club, open to the public until game time, down the left field line. He's talking about a good look at place. You look out over the field, can watch batting practice, anybody can. And here's the view from inside the Terrace Club. Fans enjoying themselves. And he, you know, great view, panoramic view. They, they, they let the game be on view for the public from just about anywhere you go. Call that user friendly and very smart plan. Eric Anthony, who homered his last time up. He's accounted for both Mariner runs. A sack fly in the first, a line drive home run that traveled 353 feet, about 11 feet off the ground. Went into the Mariner bullpen. That was in the third inning. Flowers, the runner at second base. Up top and high. Way outside. You know, there's nothing better for a new player like Eric Anthony to have an impact right off the bat. Really validates your coming over in the trade, and all of a sudden now he feels like he's already made a contribution to this club. Check swing. Alomar flips it to Murray. And it beats Anthony by a half a step. Good hustle by Alomar. A way to get rid of the ball quickly. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Indians looking to scratch through against Randy Johnson. Back when baseball truly was the national pastime, ball players were heroes and great teams legendary. Now, Sports Illustrated brings you remarkable home movie footage of baseball's glory days in the award-winning two-video set, When It Was a Game. And best of all, both videos are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. When It Was a Game features never-before-seen home movie footage shot by the players themselves, bringing the ghosts of baseball's past to life. There's Gehrig and the Babe, Williams and DiMaggio, Ebbets Field, Fenway Park, and it's all in spectacular color. Call now and get both of these award-winning videos, along with 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the swimsuit issue for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. For quick and delivery, use your credit card. There's nothing like the magic of when it was a game. And there's nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. The 1993 NASCAR season was one wild ride. Now you can relive the excitement of all 30 Winston Cup races by ordering the 1993 NASCAR Year in Review home video. For just $19.98, you can experience the triumph at Daytona, the battle for the point championship, and the rookie season of the stars of tomorrow. To order, call 1-800-764-5441 or send $19.98 plus $4 shipping and handling to the address shown. Visa and MasterCard accepted. Is this a basketball legend chasing a dream, or is this the best marketing coup ever? Outside the Lines takes a look at Michael Jordan's Dream Spring, tonight at 8 Eastern, only on ESPN. Randy Johnson has mastered the Cleveland Indians through four innings. Maldonado, Alomar, and Manny Ramirez, 6-7-8 in the lineup. Will try to bust through. Candy Maldonado and Eddie Murray, we believe, are the only players in the majors that there could be another one, but they've each homered against 27 teams. Maldonado has not homered against Florida, so obviously here with Cleveland, that won't happen. Eddie Murray has not homered against, obviously, the Baltimore Orioles. He's been in the National League since he left the Orioles until now. That would give him all 28 teams. Maldonado and Murray, 27 different ones. Of course, nobody's even singled off Randy Johnson today, so maybe that's a moot point. 
Here he is in the fifth inning. Those two walks came the first two batters that he faced. Interesting aspect, just one strikeout. Take a look at this. This happened between innings. Catcher Dan Wilson talking to Randy Johnson. You see Randy twirling his fingers there as if to say, maybe I'm having too much movement as I get set to throw the pitch. That's a conversation that will happen from time to time. Dan Wilson working with Randy Johnson for a first season may have noticed something during the previous inning. Randy might have been moving the ball as he was trying to get the grip for the breaking ball. In between innings, he comes in and says, Randy, you know, I don't really know if this is accurate or not, but I've got an idea that there might be a little bit too much movement in your glove. Ground ball is short, scooped up by Fermin. One out here in the Indians' fifth. The catcher number 15, Sandy Alomar. Another view overhead of the downtown area, the gateway area. Jacobs Field, nestled in downtown Cleveland. There's our Wahoo cam from the fans sitting or standing atop the 19-foot Jacobs ladder. They're viewing the game from the left field foul pole where there's some standing room available and not far from that are the bleachers which are over the scoreboard in left center field. And those bleacher seats are just six bucks. And that's a pretty good bargain. You are not that far away from the action in those seats below the largest scoreboard in any ballpark. So $6, a relative baggage. Sandy Alomar holds off the count as one and two. two pitch on the way foul back you saw those bleacher seats a moment ago a la Fenway both the American and National League well Fenway used to have both they only have the one now one of the leagues in the American League but you see the scoreboards in the wall all the out-of-town scores visible in that 19 foot Jacobs ladder and of course Gary will be bringing you more details Johnson misses wildly but with nobody on who cares yeah, that one just got away from him. He's been awfully consistent in the strike zone after those first two batters. And like that breaking pitch may have just slipped out of his hands. And it's two and two to Sandy Alomar Jr. That fastball up top and outside. So the Indian fans see they can go to three and two. They're hoping that the Indians can get their fourth base runner of the day. First two men of the game walk. Lofton and Vizquel. Bell reached on an error by Tito Martinez the last inning. And now Sandy Alomar Jr. is aboard with a walk. With Manny Ramirez coming up, here's Gary. Take it to Wrigley Field where the president's wife threw out the first pitch. Longtime Cub fan and the bottom of the first, Doc Gooden facing the new leadoff man, Carl Tuffy Rhodes. Take it away, Harry. Swung on. High fly ball. Way back. Might be. Could be. And Indeed, wow. Harry Carey in his 50th season as a broadcaster describes the Cubs' 1-0 lead. Back to our man, Boomer. Now that's baseball. Harry already in mid-season form. Hey, a leadoff home run for the Cubs. This could be their year. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, they're in that new NL Norris division where anything's possible. National League has three divisions this year, only one as a defending champ. Shoe on that one. As Manny Ramirez, the youngster, who looks at ball two, and Wilson will go out and talk with Randy Johnson. Count is 2-0, and oh, and he's just walked Sandy Alomar. So Johnson, for the first time since the first two batters of the game, having a bit of control problems. Well, that's got... Lou Pinella up and pacing around in the dugout. You know, Randy Johnson, I asked him about working with a new catcher. He said, it's just a matter of communication. You just have to tell him what you're comfortable with and how you like to work hitters. And all you have to do is be aware that you've got to communicate with Dan Wilson and let him know what you believe works for you. All of a sudden, Johnson 
has come out of his delivery. There in the second, third, and fourth inning, he had his breaking ball over, threw it anywhere he wanted to, and had the fastball over the strike zone. Breaking ball over for a strike. Ramirez taking all the way. The count is 3-1. Andy Ramirez. The man played only 22 games in the majors last September. Here he is. Opening day right field. New Park. Jason Randy Johnson. 21 years of age. Ground ball to short. For me. Fires on to Tino Martinez. And that will do it. The Indians are gone here in the fifth. Two-nothing Mariners. What tire do you trust in the wet? A tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The all-season MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. Taking a look at the weather, we've got a high-pressure, high-pressure system. I'm sitting right here. And that is bringing us nothing but beautiful clear skies and old Mr. Sunshine. The Isuzu Trooper was designed around the simple fact of nature. But hold on. Hold on. It's going to get better. Clear as a bell. Not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> Soaring. Try. Weathermen are really only guessing. Hey, life's an adventure. Be prepared. My prediction, it's going to rain. Trust me. Isuzu, practically amazing. Why is Embassy Suites twice the hotel? First, you get a suite with two big rooms. Evening beverages are on the house, not on the bill. And our cook-to-order breakfast is free of charge. Obviously, this isn't your typical hotel. It's twice the room, twice the comfort, and twice the value. And it's only at Embassy Suites. Twice the hotel. Call 1-800-EMBASSY. No two people are exactly alike. Hi. While Bob likes the high-gloss shine of original Armor All Protectant, Fred prefers new low-gloss Armor All with the rich, deep finish. I gotta be me. Either way, it's your choice. Only from Armor All. Top of the sixth inning here at Jacobs Field. Eric Anthony's home run and sack fly. And Randy Johnson's pitching. And the reason why the Mariners lead the Cleveland Indians 2 to nothing in the debut of beautiful Jacobs Field. As we pan from the right field foul pole over to center field. Well, yeah, there's a pregame picnic area. The reason you see nobody there right now is because that's kind of in the batter's eye. You see those trees there? So there's some trees. The wish of the Cleveland fans, they say, we would like to be raking leaves, Buck, one October, which means if we're bothering to rake them, that means the Indians are playing postseason ball. That's just 4.05 to straightaway center field. So again, you're right close to the batting practice and the action while you have your picnic lunch. Yeah, all of the fans in this ballpark have a very good view and feeling that they're right on top of the action. 6-7-8 for the Mariners here. Tina Martinez, Reggie Jefferson, Dan Wilson. Martinez 0 for 2. And an error. Chris Berman and Buck Martinez with you on opening day. Well, we debuted the Marlins their first game last year. They beat the Dodgers. The place was rocking. The problem is that uh, they didn't have to bat against Randy Johnson. So the Cleveland fans are ready to rock. Randy Johnson is not giving them anything to rock about. Way out in front of that is Tino Martinez. And the count is 2-2 two two action now in the Cleveland bullpen. And Wahoo Cam is out in the pen. That's the middle of the three mouths. Eric Kerplunk throwing in the Cleveland bullpen. That's out in right center field. Back at the plate, Tino Martinez swings and misses. There's one out. The designated hitter number 18, Richie Jefferson. There's Plunk's view. There's the plate. And there's the other plate. Jefferson walked, grounded to short. Breaking ball, misses outside, 1-0. Oh. Top 
Jefferson went from Cincinnati to Cleveland to now Seattle. Good chopper backhanded by Bayerga, double clutches, and he will beat that out. So a play Bayerga should have made, and he does not. And Jefferson is aboard. Michael Jordan dreaming about some plays that he'd like to make. He'll start out this season in Double-A Birmingham. Tonight, our Outside the Line special at 8 o'clock Eastern time is Dream Spring. Bob Lee, company, talked to Michael Jordan about his dream to play Major League Baseball. And he's now in the minors and willing to work on it, which is great. You know, with Jordan in double A, Birmingham, a chance to have quite a media circus with Matt Suzuki, the young Japanese pitcher for the Mariners, and Jordan meet up. Matt Suzuki was a real attraction for the Mariners in spring training. And they think that he may have had a bad arm, that he didn't have real good velocity, but John McLaren, the bullpen coach, was telling me he saw him throw 93, 94 miles an hour, and he's just 18 years old. That'll be interesting when Jordan meets Suzuki in double A. Well, the Mariners are not used to much media following them around. Obviously, with Junior, Ken Griffey Jr., they have a, a bona fide star, but there were 60 or 65 members of the Japanese media every day following an 18-year-old's every move which they hope will back off now in the minors, although I don't think that much. I don't know that for a fact, but 18 years old, he and Chan Ho Park, all of a sudden, they were two of the stories this spring. It was Park, the Korean pitcher that made the Dodgers club. Mac, wake up, little Suzuki. So he'll really have a nickname before he gets All ready, huh? No, you gotta be ready, but you know, I mean, I've been chopping at the bit here all this offseason. Dan Wilson sacrifice, popped the short. Two nothing Mariners. Top of the sixth. Opening day at Jacobs Field. Will we have a little more history than we originally bargained for? X-rays on Edgar Martinez, by the way, were negative, so that's the good news. A bruised right wrist day to day. The teams are off tomorrow. Don't play again till Wednesday night. So that's good news in addition to the lead that Lou Pinella's club has. Lou didn't want to start the season losing his third baseman again. Edgar Martinez missed 111 games last year because of a hamstring injury. Hit the center field. Lofton drifts back towards the rubberized warning track and makes the catch. If there's one fault, it's the same as Camden Yards. I don't know why, Buck, they have this, I don't know if they call it turf or the, or the rubberized track. For a catcher, because that continues all the way behind the plate. I mean, you'll see an outfielder dive occasionally on it, and that, that's smart. For a catcher who likes to slide back for a ball that might get past him behind the plate, that hurts. That's not dirt. I, I don't know what the love affair is with that. No, it's, uh, Baltimore has it, too. That's the only negative we could find. A little flare that Bayerga will squeeze. And for me, it's gone. Indians trying to solve Randy Johnson. We'll be back. If Burger King had just one customer, we'd have just one way to serve the number one preferred burger. But since you come in more than one size, so does the flame broiled Whopper. Like the new Whopper Junior, with more beef than before. Or double Whopper, with more beef than you believe. There's a Whopper taste for any size appetite from the everyday value of 99 cents. Whopper meals from 199. We don't have to be the world's number one fast food place. Just yours, and yours, and yours. Welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? I know it's a kid's cereal, but I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. This is my story. I used to go to secluded places so no one would discover me. I knew it was wrong, but I just couldn't help myself. Mm. Oh. Mm. That's when it happened. Hey, what's going on in there? On in there. On in there. Luckily, he understood. How can I condemn a man for something I do myself? You've got to admit, Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. 
Walter Payton puts it on pasta. Payne Stewart, blackened salmon. Dan Marino, wings. So what do you put it on? Yo! Tabasco. Opening day at Yankee Stadium, and New York is teeing off on Kevin Brown. Danny Tartable. That led off the fifth into the monuments. Two batters later, Mike Stanley. Can he follow up on a career year? Hit 26 last year, more than half of his 50 career home runs. They get two home runs in the inning. Ten hits, five earned runs through five. Brown is out of there along with those two balls. 5-1 Yanks. Back to Chris. Play shirtless in the Bronx this afternoon. And they're hitting the ball out of the ballpark again. Jimmy Key on the mound. Two home runs right there. I like that club. Right. The American League East is going to be very interesting. Loaded. Mark Lewis, Kenny Loft, and Omar Vizquel here in the bottom of the sixth inning. 9-1-2 against Randy Johnson. The upset of the day is that Johnson has one strikeout through five. No one on the Mariner bench is complaining about his performance. Penelope Lee Elia dug out lieutenant Lee Elia Kuriaka I'm not up on all of those oh. excellent you, are, you remember yeah the, the old you remember the man from uncle don't you oh. can he go around they appeal down to first base some player Greg Koski said no he did not Two and two to Mark Lewis. He holds off. And the count is full. Lewis, 24 years of age, number one draft pick in 88. Down the Cincinnati area, Hamilton, Ohio. He's going to get the Indians started. And he may have done so with a walk. The fifth base run. Only one man has ever thrown a no-hitter on opening day. April 16, 1940, the man whose statue is outside of this park, Bob Feller. 30-degree weather. The Indians were at Comiskey Park against the White Sox. One of the retired numbers here by the Cleveland Indians. Randy Johnson, can he... <laughs> Bouncer up the middle. is thrown out by the shortstop for mean and now they're going to say that the runner Lewis has gone out of the baseline they're going to get a double play is that it well we're going to have an argument over this Mike Hargrove is going to come out of the dugout Lewis is called out for avoiding the tag by Felix for and Hargrove is going to go wait a minute he didn't even go out of the baseline Al Clark's the umpire at second base for me, made a very heads-up play. I don't think he ever had the intention, once he sized up where the base runner was, to tag him. But he swiped at him. Hargrove saying he didn't go out of the baseline. The base runner's got three feet. Al Clark said no, he went out of the line, he avoided the tag, and the rule's clear. So Hargrove quickly goes back to the dugout. Take a look at the replay. Now look at me. just a very short little jab toward the tag and then goes quickly to get Lofton. Take another look at it. He sizes it up. Can I tag him? Nope, I can't do that. But look at Lewis. He avoids the tag and goes around and then throwing quickly in a hurry to get Lofton because he knows his speed. What a good play by Fermin. Omar Vizquel pops in foul ground to Mike Flowers. The fans booing. That's really the... The most we've heard out of him in a while. Randy Johnson is the reason. Gentlemen, our attempts to stop the Energizer Bunny have failed. We've got to get his battery. And to do it, we need somebody big. 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 The end of the road, Mr. Energizer Bunny. Yeah, but can they plow the back 40? Introducing the new, more powerful Grand 
Trail Series from Kubota with our smoothest, quietest track engine yet. The hunt begins now. If you make it to civilization, you live. We're not really gonna hunt him, are we? Ah! He's nothing. He's less than nothing. I won't take any part in this. Jack Mason knows he's going to die someday. I like not being rare. But today, he's not in the mood. Try well done. Ice Team. Rutger Hauer. Surviving the game. Rated R. Starts Friday, April 15th at a theater near you. We take you back to Wrigley Field where Carl Tuffy Rhodes opened the game for the Cubs with a home run. Mike Morgan couldn't make it last. Former Cub, Jose Vizcaino, takes him into the screen in right field. Then it's Todd Hundley. The son of former Cub legend Randy Hundley, back-to-back -back Jack into the screen. And Doc Gooden has a 2-1 to lead. We go back to Jacob Field. Gary, thank you. Mariners fans, the few of them that uh, are here at Jacobs Field, standing for their seventh inning stretch. They lead it two to nothing. Eric Anthony, a home run and a sack fly, and Randy Johnson has just controlled the Cleveland Indians. I think Randy Johnson is, has to be pretty confident the way he's throwing right now. Yeah, there's not a lot of strikeouts, but I think he's probably pretty pleased with the way he's pitching. Yeah. Because he has been using his breaking ball. He's been able to find the strike zone, overcame some early wildness. I think he would like to be regarded as, as a pitcher. Yeah, 19 wins last year. A lot of people say, well, he strikes out everybody. Well, he's a pitcher. He understands moving the ball around. Going to weaknesses. That's how he's been able to take that next step and, and utilize that great live arm that he has. Back in 1990, he experienced Nine innings like he's experienced thus far today. That was at home against the Detroit Tigers. Amaral fouls it off. Randy Johnson also in his career has two one hitters. This is our Wahoo Cam from a high up in the right field stance. There are three tiers in right field. But again, you're not very far back off the action, even up top. Every seat is filled today. Inside is Dennis Martinez to Rich Amaral. The count is two and two. <laughs> Sandy Alomar quickly out of the box to make the tag on Amaral. Okay, number three for Dennis Martinez. This is a real good sign. Martinez dropped down through the side on breaking ball, but look how quickly Alomar gets on this ball. No signs at all of any problems with his back that was repaired last year. So he feels great and expects to be back there every day. Rip to center field and Lofton is there to snare the well-hit ball by Mike Flowers. Flowers hit the ball well here today. He had a single, almost had another hit, but the speed of Lofton, what a jump he got, Buck. Boy, he did. He really read that well. He was shaded a step or two over in the alley in right center and got a good break on it. He's got outstanding speed. That's very obvious. Takes the liner right about waist high. Junior looks at ball one from Dennis Martinez. He's walked, struck out. And a little number 
that Alomar threw him out on. So, kind of a quiet day at the plate for Ken Griffey Jr. It's kind of a quiet day. There have been very few hard-hit balls. Of course, Anthony had the line shot home run into the Mariners' bullpen in the third inning. But outside of that, the ball Blowers hit was probably the hardest hit ball we've seen today, Buck. Well, Anthony has a history of facing Martinez, so he's got a pretty good idea what to expect from him in the plate. Three and one to Junior. There's Anthony. He's been imperial. Entire offensive, yeah, production today. Sack fly in the first. After Martinez had control problems, hit a batter and walked to. Little number again by Griffey, and that'll be foul. Looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh, where the crowd will be on its feet. Bayerga, Bell, and Murray, the heart of the order for Cleveland, up against Randy Johnson. And it's getting to that time of the game when you can't figure out why we're dancing around the issue. We haven't watched enough baseball. Randy Johnson has yet to allow the uh, ball rip foul by Griffey count is three and two two outs bases clear two nothing Mariners top of the seventh inning Chris Berman along with Buck Martinez Mariners have their two runs on three hits the Indians nada each team has made one error both by the first baseman Eddie Murray and Tino Martinez Mike Hargrove great hopes this year for the Indians a slow start at the bat rack. Martinez strikes out Ken Griffey Jr. He sprints to the dugout. Randy Johnson will lope out, facing the heart of the order for the try. Meet the Parker twins, Bob and Fred. Hi. Identical in every way, except when it comes to taking care of their cars. Bob likes the shine of original Armor All Protectant, but not Fred. I gotta be me. Fred's discovered the rich, deep finish of new low-gloss Armor All. It protects like original Armor All. But without the glossy shine. Original or new low-gloss. Now it's your choice. Only from Armor All. Hey, can I try that? My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Somewhere in the world is somebody you'd love to be able to call every single day. Now MCI's Friends Around the World Anytime gives you the lowest priced international call to that special someone seven days a week. For a limited time, you get 40% off on weekdays and 60% off on weekends. Our greatest savings ever to any person you choose. Join friends around the world anytime. Back when we started making tires, this was considered a romantic drive. But soon, America would fall in love with cars. Americans would find new ways to fall in love with each other. And through it all, we made tires for just about any car anybody started off in. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. Back here in Cleveland, where Randy Johnson and the Mariners lead the Indians 2-0. Copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form will that express written consent. Seventh inning stretch time. Can the Indians, heart of the order, get things going against Randy Johnson? 84 pitches through six innings. Has only struck out one, has walked four. Only three balls have been hit out of the infield. Bayerga and Bell were the toughest on Johnson last year on this Indians ball club. 
tries to bunt his way on this by air again. Dan Wilson won't get it in foul ground, so the count is 0 2. Carlos Baerga hit 354 against Randy Johnson. Albert Bell hit 357 with six homers and 12 runs batted in. They really roughed up Randy Johnson, although he beat him twice at a two and one record. He had an eight ERA. Only one strikeout. When Johnson had his no-no on June 2nd, 1990, at home against Detroit, he ended it by striking out Mike Heath. That was his eighth strikeout that night. Just misses low and away. Count is one and two. for strike three. Good pitch throws by Ergo. One out in the seventh. That should be an illegal pitch when you throw 93, 94 oh, miles an hour consistently. Randy Johnson drops a breaking ball on the outside corner to by Ergo, and there's no way he could pull the trigger. Just locked him up. Just the second strike out of the day, but look at by Ergo. He's thinking fastball. He can't even offer it that pitch. One out in the seventh. Albert Bell has grounded the third, reached on an error by Tino Martinez. Breaking ball misses up top and outside for a ball. Fastball up top that Bell lays off the counters 2-0. Eddie Murray on deck, 3-4-5 for the Indians. Shot foul just wide of the Indian dugout, strike one. It's interesting with Johnson, look at the shortstop for me. He is really in the hole, giving away an awful lot of ground up the middle. You wouldn't expect even Albert Bell, who's very quick, to be able to really jerk that fastball from Johnson into the hole on the ground. It's short. Three and one the count. One out, base is clear. I just don't think you overplay people to pull the ball against Johnson, although he's had a lot of success. I don't know how many fastballs he's going to really pull. He yanks this one to deep center field. Griffey goes back. But has room. He hit that directly toward the deepest part of the park. Just left of center, which is 4-10. We called it Bell's Tower. That time, Albert Bell needed a little better direction. Or he might have hit the wall or over. But it goes as a long fly ball out. Look at the concentration here focused in on that fastball down in his wheelhouse he gets all of it but just can't get the head out in front of it Eddie Murray a ball to center field Griffey squeezes it the heart of the order has been retired by Randy Johnson we've played seven here in Cleveland you look at the line score Gardner Cadillac in Manahawkin sells for less. All the popular models are in stock and priced for immediate delivery. Shop the other dealers first, but don't buy or lease until you check with us. Whether you're in the market for a new Cadillac or quality late model pre-owned vehicle, Gardner will not be undersold. For price, selection, no pressure sales, and award-winning service since 1970, visit Gardner, Oldsmobile, Cadillac, and Pontiac, just off Parkway at 63 on Route 72 in Manahawkin. Gardner Cadillac, creating a higher standard. Do you want to exercise, but find you cannot stand too long or touch your toes? If the answer is yes, then exercise along with Frankie Vale for 30 minutes while sitting in your chair. Order your videotape today for only $14.95. Send check or money order to FTS Enterprises, Post Office Box 1196, Manahawkin, New Jersey, 08050, or call area code 609-597-8539.
aligned to understanding money and investing. It focuses on financial markets, so you can make informed choices. Call now to get your guide free when you subscribe to The Wall Street Journal, where you'll find information you need to get ahead. Get 10 weeks of the journal for just $36 and the guide to understanding money and investing free with your paid subscription. Call toll-free 800-331-9600. That's 800-331-9600. at Cleveland on a day that we knew would be historic. The opening of Jacobs Field. Little did we know that there might be more history in store for April 4th, 1994. Randy Johnson has had the Indians number. 2-0 Mariners as we head to the top of the eighth. Dennis Martinez has pitched well, but he's gone. He's given up two runs and three hits. He's gone in favor of the left-hander reliever, Russ Swan. Left-hander Russ Swan is a former Mariner. He signed as a free agent in January with the Indians. There you look at his record last year, 23 games, 3-3. Three and three. 9-15 ERA. They say he's throwing the ball very well this spring. Fastball, throw a slider and a split finger pitch. Jay Buhner is 0 for 2 and a walk. Dan Wilson talking to Randy Johnson. They make the battery for the first time in a regular season. Well, pretty good start. Yeah. <laughs> the official attendance today, 41,459. So that's the number. You're right in your log sheet. By the way, there's a little number that Murray started for. He'll let Bayerga handle it. Buhner is gone. By the way, if you're scoring at home, and we know that many of you do, Reggie Jefferson in the sixth Long inning. Play the Bayerga backhanded and couldn't handle it. Scored it a hit. The play, frankly, Bayerga should have made, but it, they scored it a hit. So that's the third Mariner hit. That's with one out of the sixth. Jefferson a single, not E4. If you're looking ahead to the eighth inning, it's Candy Maldonado, Sandy Alomar, and Manny Ramirez. Six, seven, eight against that man, Randy Johnson. and missed by Eric Anthony. He had the two RBIs today. <laughs> Sky behind second base. Bayerga takes it just to the left of second base and there's two outs you know what else this park has a great play area for the kids plus a special kids menu and price list for the parents to go buy the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and they can play and the parents can watch them and the park as our wahoo cam continues to kitty lane Dino Martinez is 0 for 3 with an error today. Breaking ball by Swan, a good one in there for a strike, 1 1. Swan came over from the Giants in a trade for Gary Eve in 1990. Gary, New Year's Eve. Center field, little buster that'll get in there in front of Lofton for a base hit. The Mariners fourth of the afternoon. The designated hitter number 18, Reggie Jefferson. 
Roberto Martinez now has a batting average on a broken bat, two out, single to center. Dennis Martinez, what a fine outing for him today. There's three hits on the afternoon. And that's really a positive sign for Mike Hargo. Last year, the Indians used 18 starters. That's just too many. Always going to be playing catch up, trying to get yourself out of an early hole. And now with Martinez here, Jack Moore, a healthy Charles Nagy, Chris Nabholz will start. Pretty solid rotation if everybody can take their regular turn. 18 starters. Some teams have used in the 90s just 18 starters. And the Indians did it all in one year. But really, to be honest with you about the Indians, Buck, and I think you feel the same way I do, you almost wipe everything off the slates from last year. Any mortal understands that. Jefferson ahead of that pitch by Russ Juan. It's one and two. Two outs. Top of the eighth. Just chucked in. I <laughs> <laughs> knew this would be kind of an interesting day. Just didn't know how interesting. <laughs> Jefferson swings and misses. Martinez is stranded. Randy Johnson is the man of the hour here in Cleveland. Can he join this man, Rapid Robert Feller, with an opening day gem? <laughs> Son of a gun protected. Nothing works better on your car's leather, vinyl, and rubber. It can turn just about anything into a great looking car. Nice car. What, this pile of junk? Give it the gun with Son of a Gun. And now give your tires a quick kick with One Step Tire Care. If Burger King had just one customer, we'd have just one way to serve the number one preferred burger. But since you come in more than one size, so does the flame broiled Whopper. Like the new Whopper Junior, with more beef than before. Or Double Whopper, with more beef than you believe. There's a Whopper taste for any size appetite from the everyday value of 99 cents. Whopper meals from $1.99. We don't have to be the world's number one fast food place. Just yours, and yours, and yours. Welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Walter Payton puts it on pasta. Payne Stewart, blackened salmon. Dan Marino, wings. So what do you put it on? Yow! Tabasco. Presentation of Major League Baseball is brought to you by the lively taste of Tabasco sauce. Don't keep it bottled up. Well, some Tabasco sauce has been thrown on today by Randy Johnson. The bottom of the eighth inning here at Cleveland, and Randy Johnson has simply had the Cleveland Indians number. Candy Maldonado, Sandy Alomar, Manny Ramirez, 6 7 8. Try to solve the six foot ten left hander. The man who finished second last year in the Cy Young Award voting to, to uh, Jack McDowell. And Johnson starts off Maldonado with a strike. Chris Berman along with Buck Martinez on opening day at Jacobs Field. Breaking ball just misses outside for a ball. Randy Johnson from Walnut Creek, California. At 6'10", no one has ever been taller to play in this game. Shows you how much spring training means. One and two with an ERA of 5.75 in five spring training starts. This one's for real, and he's for real. The count is three and one. Ball four, and Maldonado 
is aboard. Johnson has surrendered his fifth walk of the afternoon. Take a look at this last pitch by Johnson. Misses outside. There's his reaction. Can't start the game like that. First on his mind is winning the game, of course. Sammy Ellis out of the dugout trying to get the bullpen's attention, get them working. Maybe the phones aren't working down there. I get it. There's a few things that they have to work out here yet, but they've, they've figured the most out. i got to give them credit. A beautiful place here at Jacobs Field, and now there's some action down in the Seattle bullpen. That's Tim Davis, the young left-hander. a breaking ball that he thought he was getting earlier in the game, Buck. But Larry Barnett says, no, that was just a little bit outside. Five walks and an error. So six runners have reached against Randy Johnson. But nobody that has reached has helped their batting average. Count is one and two. That one was in there on Sandy Jr. Well, Alomar turned around to Barnett as if to say, hey, wait a minute, you just called that one a ball. And that's why he was upset by that call. There it is. Base hit to right. Alomar is aboard. And the Indians have their first safety against Randy Johnson. So Randy Johnson took an opening day no-hit bid into the eighth inning. He went seven. But Alomar has ended it. And oh, by the way, with the score two to nothing, there are two men on. The youngster Manny Ramirez up the potential go-ahead run. Wild pitch. Runners move up into scoring position. What a game this is, Buck. I mean, you, you talk about a possible no-hitter. And now with a couple of pitches, a single will tie the game. Well, Randy Johnson uncorks the wild pitch. Ramirez was squared around the bunt. You can see Wilson couldn't get a glove on it. Runners move up. That really plays into Hargrove's hands. Now he can let the rookie Ramirez with good power swing away at Johnson. And now the fans become involved for the first time since the first inning. Rip to left. Back it goes. Back goes Anthony. It's off the wall. One run scores. Two run score. Ramirez in its second. We're tied at two. Because of the wild pitch, the runners moved up, the sacrifice is taken off, and Ramirez gets a chance to freewheel the lumber. Fastball down and in, and he rips it high off the wall in left field. Anthony goes the wrong way on the carom. It's his first day in this ballpark. Johnson looks, hoping it stays in the yard, and you can see the disappointment of giving up the two runs that allow the Indians to tie the game. Nice picture, guys. Mark Lewis is up with the go-ahead run, Manny Ramirez at second base. 21-year-old Manny Ramirez, an opening day he'll certainly remember. His first in the bigs. However, he'd like to forget this as Dan Wilson guns him down. Perhaps he was thinking about his two RBIs, and Wilson has gunned down his second man this afternoon at second base. Take a look at the quick throw by Wilson. Ramirez just drifts too far and then stumbles. You can see he loses his footing. Wilson with a perfect throw to second. The go-ahead run was wiped out. Oh, that's a rookie base running mistake. Right there, perfect throw. The tag by Fermin, not even close at second. 
two impressive throws by Wilson. Boy, One quick, strong each arm. to the correct side of the bag. Well, those are the kind of mistakes that you'd like not to see because you just got yourself in a position, scoring position with nobody out. Lewis at the plate, you can run him over, and then you got the top of the lineup to cash it in. Well, the Indians before the game were talking about the raw talent Ramirez has, but he's got to pay attention all the time, and you just saw examples of both. And it was one and two as Lewis almost uh, really scattered his teammates in the dugout. Now, Randy Johnson certainly did his best to add to the zest of the debut of Jacobs Field. He snares this ball by Lewis. And there's two down. The Randy Johnson, the told you no hitter in 90, has had two one hitters. And he'll dance with it again. You know, until the ball hit by, by Alomar and Ramirez, there was no even big defensive play behind him, Buck. No, nobody had really hit the ball sharply all day long. It was kind of a different outing for Randy Johnson in that he didn't strike out many hitters. Just two to this point. Kenny Laughlin has walked, struck out, grounded to short. Indians have tied it here. And I tell you, he danced away from it, but uh, Johnson, because of the speed that you'll have, will make you dance away from anything toward your head, but he really he broke off the big curve there. Lofton stays on it. Anthony makes the catch in the shadows in left field. Randy Johnson's bid is busted. And the Indians have tied it at two. You can feel the heat. 1,100 degrees. Intense heat. The hottest. We asked some of the hottest guys in town to trade their deodorant for new degree deodorant. Body heat activated. Let's give it a shot. As your body heat rises, only degree releases extra protection against odor. When I heat up, deodorant's going to kick in. Works far better than speed stick. Kicked in for me. Switch to the stick that's body heat activated. Uh, I'm going to stick to degree. I'd use it. The stuff works. Absolutely. Cool as ice. New degree deodorant for a higher degree of protection. Airbag, seat belts, and anti-lock brakes, child safety seats, careful driving, and a set of Michelins. Polaroid asked me, send that in these supermodels to demonstrate the sleek, stylish Captiva camera. It holds the pictures inside the camera's special pocket till you take them out and put them in a yoke pocket. <laughs> My pocket. <laughs> the Polaroid Captiva. Following our game here at Jacobs Field, we head out to the stick as the Giants and Barry U.S. Bonds open up against the Pittsburgh Pirates, Barry's old squad. Pirates in the NL Central this year, hoping to make a move, and of course, Bonds and the Giants in the 14 National League West with the Dodgers and the Rockies and the Padres. They're standing by after us. And we move to the ninth inning. Dennis Martinez is off the hook. And Jose Mesa, the hard-throwing right-hander, along with Steve Farr, will be the money pitchers down the stretch right now for Mike Hargrove's Cleveland Indians. Mesa now on to pitch the ninth. Throwing Jose Mesa was a reluctant reliever in the first half of spring training. Second half, they said, you know, we'd like you to maybe work into a part-time closer, maybe the full-time closer if you prove that you can do the job. Last year, just one relief appearance. He was a starter in the rotation. He is throwing the fastball very well. He has four pitches, but as a closer, they'd like him to eliminate two of the pitches, use just the fastball slider and the split finger pitch. Just to try to eliminate all the pitches. You don't need that many when you only face hitters one time around. 
He has always been a tantalizing pitcher in that he's got great ability. Andy Johnson took the no-hitter into the eighth inning, and then Manny Ramirez delivered a two-run double off the wall in left field to tie the score at two all. And so a brand new game here in the ninth inning. Dan Wilson, Felix Vermeen, Rich Amaral, 8-9-1 against Mesa. There you see the fastball by Mesa. Certainly the fastest of the three Cleveland pitchers that the Mariners will have seen thus far this afternoon. 92, that one was clocked at. That one up top. But Wilson is impressed. I know he impressed you, Buck. Boy, he's got a quick release and that work they did in spring training appears to have paid off utilizing more of his arm. He was always concerned with being very quick, getting the ball down to second base, and because he wasn't really extending that, his ball had a tendency to drift toward the first base side of second. We've seen none of that here today. Remember, he threw out Kenny Lofton early in the ball game. One two pitch to Wilson. He fouls up. There you go. Sun, foul pole, fans enjoying themselves, warmed up as the day has gone on. Pitches inside there. Now what you saw there, Buck, was it could be tough Sunfield for the right fielder. Because that was a view over the right field foul pole from the stands. Take a while for everyone to really get accustomed to the oddities of this ballpark. When the Blue Jays first moved into Skydome, the visitors were just as comfortable as the home team because the surroundings were so nice. Conditions always the same indoors. Indians will have a bit of the home field advantage as the season wears on. Swung on and missed by Wilson, and there's one out. Boy, the good heat by Mesa that time. Well, that's what we were talking about, Mason's ability to bring that fastball in late in the ball game. He throws that one right by Dan Wilson. Mason has always been a starter, and he was really reluctant to go down to the bullpen, but maybe get a taste of it. He will really like the uh, recognition. Strike one of the number nine hitter, Felix Fermin. Mason started with the... Toronto organization was traded in 87 to the Orioles for Mike Flanagan right at the end of his career when Toronto was making a run. He faded one in 87 when Detroit caught him at the wire. In July of 92, the Orioles traded him to the Indians. Here's a shot to right center. Long run for Lofton, and he makes the play. Ramirez almost got in his way. Of course, he's looking in the sun, but again, that quick break by Lofton, Buck, got him there. Look at Kenny Lofton tell him, listen, Manny, listen for me. And believe me, I don't care if you're a rookie or not, when Kenny Lofton's in center, you got to yield to him. Let him use his speed. But he knows that Ramirez is right there. He's hollering, I got it, I got it, raises his hand up, and Ramirez has got to pay attention to Lofton because he's the man in charge out there. He's got great range and great speed, and as Chris said, he gets a fabulous jump on the ball. Rich Amaral fouls it back. There it is, Buck. You see the shadows coming directly toward right field. You see the, the shadows of those toothbrush lights, they call them. is one of one. The Indians acquired Jose Mesa from the Orioles in July of 92 for Kyle Washington. I know, I'm asking the same question. Who he? Brown ball, it's a fair ball past Lewis who was cheating it on the grass. Amaral will have a double. Lewis was a couple of steps in at third, and that cost him time to field the ball. Earlier in the ball game, Amaral faked a bunt with two outs, and look at the shadows yep. down there on the third base line. Gives the ball a strobe-like effect as it starts out in the sun, then goes in the shade, then goes in the sun again, and now it's in the shade. He dives for it. It takes a funny hop and stays in fair territory. 
with two outs he was thinking about that fake bunt that he had seen earlier in the ball game playing shallow and gives up a double down into the left field line Dan Morris in the third base umpire right on the play you saw the ball hit the chalk and then bounce back into fair territory well I mean the chalk is in fair territory but if you once it hits that it, it goes foul it bounced the other way and a visit to the mound well, here it goes. Take another look at it. There yep. it's in the sun. Now it's in the shade. Gets dark. Back in the sun. And then it hits its foul line. And you can see Lewis grabs for it. But it goes back toward fair play. You can see it hits squarely on the foul line. Look at the umpire position. Perfectly positioned. Watching the ball. See where it ends up. It's in fair territory. And then he signals it fair. Mike Flowers is up with two outs. And the go-ahead run at second base. Flowers, who came out of the bottom of the first inning after Edgar Martinez was hit in the wrist. Martinez left the game. X-rays negative if you're tuning in late. Flowers has been in and hit the ball pretty hard. And a single in the fifth inning and stung one to center field. The Lofton made a nice catch on his last time up. Flowers is one for three. Fastball high and inside. Flowers gained an awful lot of experience last year because of Martinez's injury. He got to play a lot of third base and had his career's year with the bat. Always been a pretty decent third baseman, but never had enough at bats to become comfortable in the big leagues. Came over a few years ago from the Yankees. There's a ball hit by to Lewis. Lewis across to Eddie Murray. And then the go-ahead run is stranded at second base. So we head to the bottom of the ninth. Is Kel Bayerga Bell. Will the Indians muster up a win? My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denorex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denorex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denorex. No flakes, no itch. Denorex, the serious dandruff shampoo. If Burger King had just one customer, we'd have just one way to serve the number one preferred burger. But since you come in more than one size, so does the flame broiled Whopper. Like the new Whopper Junior, with more beef than before. Or double Whopper, with more beef than you believe. There's a Whopper taste for any size appetite from the everyday value of 99 cents. Whopper meals from $1.99. We don't have to be the world's number one fast food place. Just yours, and yours, and yours. Welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? It's nice to know that one phone call to a farmer's insurance agent can take care of your insurance needs. And with a farmer's friendly review, you know everything is properly covered. Farmer's friendly review. For your home. For your car. And for your family. Farmer's Insurance Group. For home, auto, and life. Opening day at Camden Yards. Kevin Apier facing the Orioles. Mike Devereaux, bottom of the first. Devereaux connects and got things off to a good start for Baltimore. Mike Mussita is making his first ever opening day start. So far, it's a 1 0 game for Baltimore. So we take it to the night at Jacobs Field. All right, Gary, thank you. Boy, a lot of first inning home runs at opening day. Lankford last night. Devereaux there. Rhodes for the Cubs. Randy Johnson cannot win, he cannot lose. He had a no-hitter going until the eighth inning when Alomar busted it open, and then Manny Ramirez busted open his shutout. So he leaves, you see his line score. Randy Johnson is out after eight innings of work, and in a 2-2 game here in the bottom of the ninth, the youngster Tim Davis on to pitch to the numbers two, three, and four hitter for the Tribe, Vizquel, Bayerga, and Bell. Here's a long run from Appleton to Seattle, Buck. This is just his second professional season. Tim Davis pitched collegiately as a junior and senior for Florida State. Lou Pinella liked what he saw from Davis. He didn't care where he came from. He just liked the way he came at hitters. Pitched at Appleton and Riverside last year. That, you don't usually make that jump from them to the bigs. 
Sixth round selection in 92. This one is skied by Vizquel. And that's going to be interference. And the first baseman, Tino Martinez, is hurt. Well, that's something you don't see very often, but this girl got caught looking up at the pop-up and was kind of wandering down the line. Martinez not expecting anybody at all. So you don't have a... These guys' teammates last year, Buck. Remember that. Watch Fiskel. He's frustrated because he popped it up, and now he's looking at it, just expecting Wilson to catch it, and all of a sudden, Martinez is right there. You can bet that knocked the wind out of Tino. At least, hopefully, it's nothing more serious. Looks like he's okay. That's good news. Yeah, they don't need both Martinez is hurt on opening day, do they? Well, they finished up the season with both of them hurt. Tino hurt his anterior cruciate ligament last year and can't see him this 50 games. That'll cause you to Martinez lunch. Uh, so he's out on interference is Vizquel, and here's Carlos Baerga. Boy, a money situation. Tim Davis on to pitch. We're looking at two teams without bona fide closers, although Steve Farr for the Indians has certainly done that. The question is his durability. The Mariners really don't have one. Obviously, a tie game, you're not looking at your closer anyway. But the Mariners have just signed Goose Gossage over the weekend. He made the club in the two days pitched in Vancouver. But it's Gossage, the youngster Bobby Ayala, and maybe they hope a return to form of Bobby Thigpen. That's a bullpen by committee at this stage. Fouled off by Bayerga. Well, in spring training, Luke Canella had a meeting with several of the owners of the Mariners Ball Club, and he was emphasizing to them, you get me a bona fide closer, and you can print the postseason tickets. So it'll be interesting to see how long they go if indeed they need to pick up a closer. Possibly bring a Rick Aguilera to the Mariners. Up top is the slider. It's 3-1. Baerga is 0 for 3. Albert Bell is on deck. 2-2, bottom of the ninth. With a chopper for Means, going to have to hurry, does so over to Tino Martinez, and there's two down. Jacobs Field, the first game ever, first major league regular season game here. And the Indians and the Mariners have battled to a 2-2 tie. The cheers for Albert Bell. He of the 38 homers last year. And there's so much talk, Buck Martinez, of that is a new beginning for Cleveland, and wouldn't this be ideal for them? Staring at a no-hitter, figuring it's the same old Indians. New Park. They're about to get no hit on opening day. Can't they do anything right? Here they battle back in the eighth. And could they possibly win it in the ninth? Or somewhere along the line in their final at bat? One more note on Randy Johnson, who pitched so very, very well. Two of the last three years, the runner-up for the Cy Young Award voting has won the Cy Young the next year in the American League. Johnson was second last year. Keep that in mind. Bell, a pool cue shot. It's fair down the line. He'll hustle into second base. Actually, a fan has grabbed the ball. And they'll call out a ground rule double. Or will they? You know what they could call is interference. They're not good. Did that bounce up in there? I couldn't see it. It's out of my view. Yeah, it looked like a fan reached over and got it because they called it a fan obstruction immediately. And yeah, but you know what my question is. Did they reach over and get it? Take a look at the swing here. They're trying to go down and away from Bell. He hits it off the end of the bat. It just goes over Tino Martinez's head and stays just inside the foul line. See, now here's what I'm... You know, that, that's going to be a double, but yet, theoretically, Buck, that did not bounce into the seats. We never saw it. I assume a fan grabbed it. He could have hurt Bell. They could have, could have ruled that a single. Winning run, though, at second base with two out, and it's Eddie Murray. Yeah. Rip to left! Foul! 
This is what the Indians didn't have last year, somebody to hit behind Albert Bell. They didn't go out and just get somebody, they got Eddie Murray. He has been in this situation before. When you look back to Murray's career in Baltimore, Cal Ripken always had outstanding years when Eddie Murray was hitting behind him. The chant of Eddie for the first time ever in Cleveland. 0-1 pitch, he waved at that one. Good pitch that was out of the strike zone that fooled Murray 0-2. Good changeup. Here's Tim Davis, 23-year-old, pitched a ball last year against Eddie Murray, the all-time leader in games played at first base in his 18th season. 23 against the 38-year-old. Who will win out? Try the same pitch with a little more velocity. Missed. One and two. Swing gonna be trouble. Base hit. Murray with his first hit as a Cleveland Indian. About a 60 footer. And runners on the corners for Candy Maldonado. Well, Murray gets fooled on this. Looks like another off speed pitch to the outside. Tries to check his swing and then it stays fair. Flowers respecting. Murray's power has to play deep at third. When he charges hard, he knows that he's not going to have any play at all. Just picks up the ball. Albert Bell moves into third base. First and third, two outs. Lou Vanilla wants to talk things over. So he's going to send Dan Wilson out to talk to Tim Davis here. You know, here's a young fella coming out of a ball 23 years old pretty calm and collected take a look at the Mariners bullpen Goose Gossage 309 saves Bobby Thigpen 201 and it falls off dramatically well the bad the good news is there's over 500 saves in the bullpen what's the number only nine nine as Mariners there's Bobby Ayala down in the bullpen. They project him to be the closer. John McLaren, the bullpen coach. Uh, here comes Lou Pinella, and he may go to Ayala right here. Obviously with a right-handed hitter, Candy Maldonado. Ayala, who Lou liked when he was a youngster with Cincinnati. Davis out, Ayala in. We'll be back. Back when we started making tires, this was considered a romantic drive. But soon, America would fall in love with cars. And Americans would find new ways to fall in love with each other. And through it all, we made tires for just about any car anybody started off in. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. plow the back 40 introducing the new more powerful grand l series from kubota with our smoothest quietest tractor engine yet the first thing i did when i came to the united states was find a soccer game of course in colombia it's more than a game it's your passion it's your life la vida <laughs> i played with some of the guys there since i was a little chiquillo with mci's friends around the world you can call all the people you care about more often i speak to my old goalie at least once a week because you save on your international calls every day he also happens to be my brother you let three calls in oh, hombre i think it needs me down there <laughs> join friends around the world anytime the easiest way to call the easiest way to save in Cleveland at Jacobs Field, the bottom of the ninth. The Indians in a tie ball game have runners on the corners and the right-handed Bobby Ayala came in with the right-handed batter Candy Maldonado up. And that 
means that the Indians will counter with left-handed swinging Paul Veal Sorrento. To hit against Bobby Ayala with a live arm, but not a lot of experience in this sort of situation, Buck. No, he hasn't, but they believe that he might be able to make the adjustment. They like his pitches. He throws hard. He's got good movement on his fastball. He throws a good slider. He's got a split finger pitch, and he throws a palm ball changeup. Unusual for a short inning relief pitcher to throw four pitches, but Lou Pinella was impressed with the arm that he saw when he was the manager of Cincinnati. And when he had an opportunity to make the deal that sent Eric Hansen and Brett Boone to Cincinnati, he wanted Bobby Ayala. Well, he got Ayala and Dan Wilson, the battery right now, trying to put this thing into extra innings. Don't forget the Giants and the Pirates coming up next with Joel Myers, Jim Kittycott, and the Hotel California crew. Third, Murray at first, Sorrento digs in, check swing. Strike one. That was an off-speed pitch. I wasn't sure whether it was the split finger pitch or the changeup, but you could see Sorrento was geared up for the fastball. There's a split, a little harder pitch. That time they appealed to the third base of Dan Morrison. No, sir. Count is one and one. Sorrento will play first base most of the time. And Eddie Murray will DH most of the time against the tough lefty Randy Johnson. Sorrento sat, but that's the only reason he wasn't in there. He's the regular first baseman here. Again off speed. Again outside. Two and one. Mariners with a run in the first, a run in the third. Indians with two in the eighth when they broke up Randy Johnson's no-hitter. There's the winning run, Albert Bell. Murray goes to second base. Wilson will not throw. That certainly doesn't mean anything. Except the stolen base for Eddie Murray. Yeah, you don't want to stoop, I'm sorry. don't want to move any defenders to cover second no, in this situation. Now. Everybody holds their ground. You can see the bag to Eddie Murray. Two and two to count. Sorrento had called time. Larry Barnett was waving his hands wildly. Sorrento had asked for time. Barnett gave it to him, and Ayala was on his way to the plate. Jacobs Field in Cleveland, the debut, opening day of the spanking new yard in downtown Cleveland. And the Indians have treated to their fans to a comeback. However, they haven't come all the way back to take the lead. Sorrento struck out by Bobby Ayala. We go to extra frames. Tied it to. If Burger King had just one customer, We'd have just one way to serve the number one preferred burger. But since you come in more than one size, so does the flame broiled Whopper. Like the new Whopper Junior, with more beef than before. Or double Whopper, with more beef than you believe. There's a Whopper taste for any size appetite from the everyday value of 99 cents. Whopper meals from 199. We don't have to be the world's number one fast food place. Just yours, and yours, and yours. Welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? the Energizer battery. It keeps going and go In an age of anonymous luxury cars, a Jaguar remains defiantly individual. Because Jaguar has a design philosophy that doesn't change with the wind. Details on the new Jaguar Dream Lease. See your local dealer. 
It is a slugfest at Wrigley Field. Doc Gooden's Mets have gotten him nine runs, but he can't solve Carl Rhodes. They call him Tuffy, and he has been the toughest out on opening day. That's his third home run of the day in three at-bats. They've gone to the sixth, and the Cubs are still trailing 9-7, to seven, but plenty to play. Candlestick Park is where you're going next. After we decide what happens in Cleveland, Chris Berman brings it to you. So much fun here at Cleveland that we just don't want to go away. We'll get you at the candlestick momentarily to Joel and Kitty and Cutter and the boys. But we've got Ken Griffey Jr. up against Jose Mesa. Here in the top of the 10th inning. Both RBIs for the Mariners from Eric Anthony. Sack fly in the first, a home run in the third. Manny Ramirez, two-run double off the wall in the eighth. This title. And a strike call on the inside corner. Indians have had a pretty good plan of working Griffey Jr. inside all day long. Mesa with a hard fastball, hard slider. Now they set up away. Ground ball that Vizquel fields from his knees. He won't have time to get Griffey. He stumbled in the first place going for the smash by Griffey. I got to assume it's a hit, but we'll wait to see. I would think it'd be a hit. It was hit sharply. They went away from Griffey. He hits it hard on the ground. You can see Vizquel gets to it, but he's on his knees when he does. The ball hits off the heel of his glove, and Griffey hustling down the line. Beats it out easily. So Junior aboard with his first hit of the 94 season, and Jay Buner is up. Junior and Buner, three four hitters of the Mariners. Buner walked in the first, and a couple of ground outs and a fly ball out on the afternoon. Showed bunt, although I don't know how serious he was. Took the pitch for a ball. You can see defensively they have to play straight away there. A step or two in looking for the double play ball. In the outfield, Lofton's on the right field side of second. Buter has good power in right center. Looking at some of the other scores here, Buck, on that scoreboard. I guess the Roger Clemens big season won't get started on an opening day. 8-6 so Detroit. Boy, those Tigers That's a match. Detroit Can't score, they? isn't yeah, it? 8-6? to right. six. <laughs> Well, the two-point conversion's in now, so that makes sense. Lions went for it. Buner does bunt, and Murray fields it. A shot to go foul. The problem was if it didn't go foul, he could make no play. Well, I noticed it going back into fair territory. I think Eddie Murray saw the same thing because of Lofton. There might be some tilt to the foul line. Look at yes. this ball. Hits the grass and then it's on the dirt. Those generally roll foul, but you can see that ball is going to stay in fair ground. Eddie Murray picks up on it, goes for the out at first base, but Buter does his job moving Ken Griffey Jr. to second base. Yeah, that's a good comment, Buck, because it looks like, well, we'll take time to find out, but that's part maybe of your home field advantage. Maybe all that chalk is built up so high that the ball skids back down. Mesa's out. Changes of plenty here in Cleveland. We'll be back. The Vander Holyfield. The Warrior. Right hand by Holyfield inside. Mark Bowback. Michael Moore. The Destroyer. The Champion. Courageous. The Challenger. Nasty. Holyfield versus Moore. Will versus Power. Do you want to exercise but find you cannot stand too long or touch your toes? If the answer is yes, then exercise along with Frankie Vale for 30 minutes while sitting in your chair. Order your videotape today for only $14.95. Send check or money order to FTS Enterprises, Post Office Box 1196, Manahawkin, New Jersey, 08050, or call area code 609-597-8539.
Sam Parker is customer engineer for IBM and a DeVry graduate. When I came out of the military, I wanted a challenging career and a quality education. DeVry helped me get both. At DeVry, you can get a four-year bachelor's degree in just three years. You learn the technology that puts you ahead in today's business. DeVry helped me advance to a great career. Call anytime. 1-800-247-7800. DeVry. We're serious about success. A black hawk makes you look up in the tree. The blues make you feel down in the dumps. You like up and down hockey? You got it. The Chicago Blackhawks versus the St. Louis Blues. Tomorrow at 8.30. NHL and ESPN2. Time of the 10th inning and a pitching change for the Indians. Their fourth pitcher of the afternoon, the left-hander, Derek Lilliquist. Lilliquist pitched in 56 ball games for the Indians last year. He was one of many players down in that pen that combined in the committee. He had 10 saves and 13 opportunities. Good control. You can see he comes right at you. 40 strikeouts and 64 innings, just 19 walks. He's facing the only man that has driven in a run all year long for the Seattle Mariners. Eric Little Anthony with Junior. Ken Griffey Jr. leading off second base with one out. Anthony, sack fly in the first, home run in the third. Gets under this one. Eddie Murray, not a lot of room in foul territory, but enough for him to make the play. And there's two down. Well, the pitchers aren't enthralled with the lack of room in foul ground here. Balls are in the seats very quickly. Yeah, you can see there's not much room at all. Pop-ups will drift out of play, give the hitters an extra swing. Pitchers, they notice those things, you know, they take them personally. <laughs> Tina Martinez up. The Mariners 0 for 6 this afternoon with runners in scoring position. See those shadows from the toothbrush lights, as they call them, but now reach past the mound. Good thing we snuck in the daylight savings time over the weekend or else uh, they'd be out to first base. Tito Martinez, a good play by Sandy Alomar Jr. Steve Griffey at second base. Sorry to say, Tino Martinez, remember he was shaken up on that play in foul ground. He took a shot to the body. But it was only from the shortstop, Omar Vizquel. If he had taken a shot from, let's say, Albert Bell, he might not be in the game right Yeah, now. he probably just got the wind knocked out of him. Not really expecting to be blindsided as he's waiting for a foul ball. Especially a former team. is 3-0 to Tino Martinez one for four singled his last time up and he is aboard so runners at first and second for the former Indian Reggie Jefferson except it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter and a man who swung a hot bat for the Mariners this spring Keith Mitchell cousin of Will step to the plate, hit over 400 for most of spring training. Ended up just below the 400 mark. At 349, had four home runs and 22 RBIs, which is a club record in the spring. There's a mark that Ken Griffey's had broken by Keith Mitchell. Of course, it's a spring mark, but he swung a hot bat. Part of the reason why they shipped Lee Tinsley off to Boston. Lou said, well, I'm going to go with my three outfielders, obviously, Griffey and Buhner. I'm going to go with Anthony. I don't really need that much other help. Both of these clubs have much more depth than they've had in the last several seasons. The Indians have good depth in the bullpen. They might not have a front-line closer, but Mike Hargrove has some guys down there that he could march in there and counteract the opposing manager's moves. Lilliquist will be facing the right-handed hitter Mitchell with two outs trying to get out of this jam. Mitchell, of course, one of the many that there's no room for in Atlanta. Whoever had a shot to get in, Lilliquist has thrown ball one. 
He has a right-hander in his heart, though, of Eric Plunk throwing in the bullpen, but he doesn't want to go through his whole bullpen by the end of the 10th inning. There's a strike, one and one. Two outs, Griffey in second, Martinez at first. Top and inside, two and one. Here's Eric Plunk. He was the first reliever to warm up today. And he's seen a parade of guys march past him. Is wondering, was it something I said? Ripped by Mitchell to left. Here comes Griffey. Here comes the throw from Bell. It's high. Griffey is safe. The Mariners lead it three to two. Well, Albert Bell had 16 assists last year in the outfield, but Keith Mitchell delivers a pinch hit base hit. Bell's throw is strong, but it took off on him. Take a look at the swing here. That fastball drifts inside. Alomar wanted away. Albert gets it in real good shape here, but the ball takes off on him. It's on line, but look at Alomar. He has to jump high when he comes down. Griffey's already across home plate. Well, if the throw's down low, Buck, they, nah, I guess he might have gotten him. Now here's the pitching change, and you got to wonder, don't you go to Eric Plunk? Of course, this is hindsight. You figure with two outs, maybe he could get away with Lilliquist there, but against the right-handed hitter Mitchell, could you have gone to Plunk then? Yeah, he might have. Probably wishes he would have now. He didn't. Plunk's in, but the Indians trail. Okay, here goes. Abracadabra. No dialing? Like Shazam? Just my voice? Okay, okay. Call home. It works. I knew it would. Call now for the revolutionary voice-activated phone card. Only from Sprint. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. Atlanta, April 8th, 1974. Now here is Henry Aaron. This crowd is up all around. The only thing I wanted to do was hit that home run and get it out of the ballpark. I think that's going to be a record to stand for a long time. He said, meet me at the ballpark, Mom. He said, I'm going to break the record tonight. He's sitting on 714. Swinging. There's a drive into left center field. That's Hank Aaron went on to hit 755 home runs. A message from Major League Baseball. Keith Mitchell, the hero for the Seattle Mariners thus far, as his pinch hit two out single scored Ken Griffey. And don't forget now, the Indians are far, are far from out of the woods. With Tino Martinez at third and Keith Mitchell at second base, Eric Plunk, right hander, now comes on to face the catcher, Dan Wilson. Plunk, the former Oakland A, last year had more strikeouts than any pitch, so you know he can bring it. And again, you get a question. I mean, you could second guess all day. I mean, he might have liked Lilliquist working outside to Mitchell, but obviously Mitchell sat on it. We told you he'd been swinging a hot bat in the spring, and he continues. So Keith Mitchell, the hero thus far for the M's. Well, Lilliquist will think about the walk with two outs to Tino Martinez. That's the one that's hurting him. Dennis Martinez still on the bench with that hot water bottle trying to stay warm. Good outing for Dennis today. Two runs allowed on just three hits. Seven innings of work. Now Plunk had better bear down here or else uh, the Indians will find themselves behind by three. Wilson swings at the first pitch. Strike one. 
Keith Mitchell, his first at bat, his first hit, his first RBI in the American League. He only played 48 games in Atlanta in 91, was really kind of stymied at Richmond. Free agent signed back in November by the Mariners. That's paid dividends. Inside, Wilson holds off one and one. Mitchell is uh, 24 years of age from San Diego. Cousin of Kevin Mitchell. And now you see the shadows now have moved and engulfed much of the third base area. So a tough area to field for Mark Lewis, who's guarding the line. Wilson swings and misses. It's one and two. Look into the 10th inning for the Tribe. 7-8-9. Alomar, Ramirez, and Lewis do up. Speed, grounded to short, Vizquel to Murray, and the Mariners are gone, but not until they've grabbed the 3-2 lead. Sandy Alomar and company trying to tie it in the bottom of the 10th. New Nut Rages from Reese's. Peanuts, milk chocolate, caramel, Reese's peanut butter. New Nut Rages. Mmm, give your mouth a party. Polaroid asked me, Sinbad needs supermodels to demonstrate the sleek, stylish Captiva camera. It holds the pictures inside the camera's special pocket till you take them out and put them in a, your pocket. <laughs> My pocket. <laughs> the Polaroid Captiva. You can feel the heat. 1,100 degrees. Intense heat. The hottest. We asked some of the hottest guys in town to trade their deodorant for new degree deodorant. Body heat activated. Let's give it a shot. As your body heat rises, only degree releases extra protection against odor. When I heat up, deodorant's gonna kick in. Works far better than speed stick. Kicked in for me. Switch to the stick that's body heat activated. Uh, I'm gonna stick to degree. I'd use it. The stuff works. Absolutely. Cool as ice. New degree deodorant for a higher degree of protection. If Burger King had just one customer, we'd have just one way to serve the number one preferred burger. But since you come in more than one size, so does the flame broiled Whopper. Like the new Whopper Junior, with more beef than before. Or double Whopper, with more beef than you believe. There's a Whopper taste for any size appetite from the everyday value of 99 cents. Whopper meals from 199. We don't have to be the world's number one fast food place, just yours, and yours, and yours. Welcome to Burger King, can I take your order please? Bottom of the 10th at Jacobs Field, the Mariners have climbed to a 3-2 lead over the Tribe. Don't forget, immediately following the conclusion of this game, which could be in three outs, it's the Giants and the Pirates from Candlestick. With Joe Myers and Jim Cott standing by to bring you the Giants opener at home. Bobby Ayala against the number seven hitter, Sandy Alomar. The Indians did not get any hits in the first seven innings off Randy Johnson. They got two in the eighth. And they come through with two in the ninth. They need a couple here in the tenth to keep things going. Ayala came on with two outs in the ninth and pitched very well, Buck, to Paul Sorrento. This is going to be the closer to start the year for Lou Pinella. So here he has a chance to see him in this situation. Well, they struck out Paul Sorrento with two men on in the tie game. And right there, it looked like another split finger pitch. As I mentioned earlier, Ayala with a good live arm. A lot of movement on his fastball. One thing that Pinello really likes about Ayala is his makeup. No fear. Comes right at you. Alomar goes down swinging, so two batters faced by Ayala, two struck out. It was Alomar that busted open the no-hitter by Johnson, but no such luck against Ayala. Alomar is talking to himself about what he saw from Ayala. Who is this guy with all these moving pitches? Well, Ayala will now face the man whose two-run double tied this thing in the eighth, 21-year-old Manny Ramirez. Frank, Ayala moving the ball around. Ayala from Oxnard.
Bayard, California. A little bit north of L.A. Ramirez, of course, got the big hit early in the ball game for the Indians to tie the score with a double off the left field wall. Unusual for a youngster like Ramirez coming into the big leagues with such a good eye and patience at the plate. Charlie Manuel, the hitting instructor of the Indians, is going to keep a close eye on him to make sure he doesn't take too many pitches. In the minor leagues, he can fall behind in the count, but minor league pitchers couldn't put him away. A different story in the big leagues. Lays off the close pitch there. Good, good action on the breaking ball, but now he's behind three and one to Manny Ramirez. And Wilson go, will go out to talk to Ayala. At least the two know each other from the Reds coming over uh, together in the trade that you mentioned for Brett Boone and Eric Hansen in the offseason. They're beating the drum as they did at Municipal Stadium for years and years. And we had one president here, the president, Bill Clinton. This man is John Adams beating the drum out in the bleachers as he did at Municipal Stadium. Inside and Ramirez is aboard. So with one out, the tying run is aboard and a pinch hitter for Mark Lewis. The good hitting third baseman, Jim Tomey. Can you hear me? Tomey will be the third baseman for much of the season this year for the Indians. They're worried about his throwing, obviously his defense. Tomey, left-handed hitter, International League Player of the Year. He's 23 years of age. Last year at 332 at Charlotte. The wheels are spinning. Kirby is a pinch runner. Tommy is the pinch hitter. Ayala is out. We'll be back. A friendly warning about the ultimate meat combo pizza from Pizza Hut. You know, this pizza changed my life. A meat tastes so big, everything else will seem small. I used to love the thick, juicy steak. Now it seems like a little order. Big, thick slices of pepperoni. Two kinds of Italian sausage. And burgers taste downright microscopic. This taste is so big. It even makes my whole herd of prime beef seem my puny. The ultimate meat combo pizza from Pizza Hut. One bite, and there's no going back. Taking a look at the weather, we've got a high-pressure, high-pressure system. Sitting right here. And that is bringing us nothing but clear skies and... Oh, Mr. Sunshine. The Isuzu Trooper was designed around the simple fact of nature. But hold on. It's gonna get better. The weatherman. Where's the bell? Not a cloud in the sky. Uh -huh. Really, only guessing. Life's an adventure. Be prepared. My prediction, it's gonna rain. Trust me. Isuzu, practically amazing. gun protectant. Nothing works better on your car's leather, vinyl, and rubber. It can turn just about anything into a great-looking car. Nice car. What, this pile of junk? Give it the gun with Son of a Gun. And now give your tires a quick kick with one-step tire care. The back half of our doubleheader is underway at the stick so far. It's scoreless. Andy Van Slyke has the only hit. They're playing in the second. We'll take it there, but first some business to complete at Jacobs Field. All right, Gary, that's coming up here. The Mariners lead the Indians 3-2, but the drums of John Adams are banging away in the bleachers. He's worked that skin pretty good over the years, don't you think, Buck? Yeah, but he's not used to having so many guys around him. As I know, he usually has the whole section himself. Nobody felt the pipe down. Here's the young left-hander, Kevin King, that's come out. So we've seen Lou's youngsters here in a money situation. Well, so far, Lou has played it by the book. He knows he doesn't have a legitimate closer down there, so don't fall in love with Ayala, even though he looked pretty good. Go with the percentages. Wayne Kirby comes on as a pinch runner with one out. He represents a tying run. Jim Tomey with the high socks a la Rusty Staub. 
The left-handed batter against the left-handed pitcher, Kevin King. King is seventh round selection in 1990. Here's Tomey, we told you it's Charlotte last year. He hit 332 with 25 homers, 102 RBI. Hitting is not the problem here. Here's the Sox, a classic Sox. George Brett Sox. Baseball without George this year. Although he's the vice president who has still yet to take his uniform off, I noticed. He's got a locker in his office. Yeah, well, his office is the locker, isn't it? He only has an office. Count his own one to Jim Tomey and King to be a good eye on Randy Kirby, who was the starting right fielder last year. Did a heck of a job at the age of 29, finally busting through to the majors for 10 years in the minors. He's one of those guys who's got the good attitude, obviously, but here he is. He finally got his shot. He played well, but Manny Ramirez is going to play right field. The Pirates and Giants coming up next from the stick. We'll keep you posted. Kirby's brother, by the way, Terry Kirby, the fine rookie running back of the Miami Dolphins. American University of Virginia. Oh, Tommy took a big cut and missed. Count is one and two. Well, Tommy will play every day, as Chris has mentioned, but like so many managers, Mike Hargrove didn't want to start the young left-handed hitter against Randy Johnson opening day. No reason to mess up the six months of spring training with one start against Randy Johnson for a young left-handed hitter. King keeping his eye on Kirby who had well, there's, there's Lewis who four. Lewis sits with the, there's a shot down the right field line it's going for extra bases Kirby around third he will hold up there as Buhner up with the ball very quickly Buhner one of the best right fielders in the American League and right there you saw why but Toma, you saw why they know he can hit. Drilled it into the corner. Well, Mike Hongro's club can hit. It was only a fine defensive play by Jay Buhner that kept the Indians from tying up this game. Jim Tomey, Tommy Hawk, that inside pitch. Watch the follow-through finish up here. Turns on it, hooks it down into the corner. Watch the play by Buhner. Remember, he's playing in this park for the first time, but plays the carom perfectly. Grabs it on one hop and makes a perfect throw to Tino Martinez at first base. So Kenny Lofton up, and he'll get the intentional pass. And the Mariners will pitch to their former teammate, Omar Vizquel, with the game on the line. This is going to be a problem for Lou Pinella. Closing out the game. Two Mariners, just one out, bottom 10. Kevin King trying to nail it down, but with the sacks full, Omar Vizquel traded away by the Mariners to the Indians in the offseason. He can come back to haunt them. Vizquel's an excellent bunner. Look at Blowers. He's got to come in even at the bag at third base. Dino Martinez, same at first. Ooh, inside for a ball. Oh, what a spot for the youngster, Kevin King, who pitched in just 13 games last year late in the season with Seattle. None of which, I think, in this sort of situation. Well, he told Pinelli he wanted to come into the game with base runners on. Well, He's got his wish. This Kel 0 for 3 and a walk. 1 0 pitch. Ripped up the middle. Oh! Play is made at second base. The tying run scores. The force out is made at second on the base runner Lofton. What a play by Amaral. 
to save the game. And now Pinello saying interference and he couldn't turn the two, but Blue's not going to win this one. No. Kenny Lofton slid hard in the second. Amaral, what a play he made to start that potential double play. But Lofton did a good job of hustling down there and sliding hard into second. Take a look at the play. What a play by Amaral initially, and he gets rid of it quickly right to Fermin. But look at Lofton. Fermin spins around, and Lofton is fine right there. Yeah. No problem at all with that slide. He just slides hard and takes Fermin's feet right out from under him. Look at Pinella's reaction. He comes shooting out of that dugout thinking that that may have been called a rolling block, which then the umpire could have called a double play. Did he run faster than Lofton? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Baerga. Fourteen RBIs last year, and that'll be an uncontested again. Pitcher's indifference. And Vizcal will go down to second base. 3-3. Three, three. Tommy, the potential winning run, leads off third. 1-0 pitch. Hit in the air to center field. Should be routine for Griffey. It is... And we move on to the 11th inning. Each team scoring here in the 10th. Come on back now, yeah. Your first time as a Junior Achievement Elementary School volunteer can be a little scary. Can you get kids that young to think about their futures? Call us about volunteering and you'll see. We'll supply you with training for this new program and the kids will supply plenty of motivation. Paradise Travel is offering an island and cruise vacation to the Bahamas aboard the Sea Escape Cruise Lines. Included are four days and three nights at the Bell Channel Inn Waterfront Resort Hotel. Port and departure taxes, shipboard meals, and activities and more. Secure your trip now with a deposit of only $99 per person. Travel is good up to one year from date of purchase. Call now to reserve your trip. Space is limited. Use your credit card or personal check. Come and enjoy the Bahamas. Call now. Finally, New York has its own pure rock radio station, the new Q104.3 FM. The new Q104.3. New York's pure rock. Basketball legend chasing a dream, or is this the best marketing coup ever? Outside the Lines takes a look at Michael Jordan's Dream Spring, tonight at 8 Eastern, only on ESPN. The next game, our doubleheader is underway. Zane Smith in the second inning at the stick against Matt Williams. Oh, he connected. That's going to get out of there. His first career home run against Zane, his first of the year. Over the gap, and the Giants have a 1-0 lead for John Burkett. We'll get you back there if our game ever ends. So, Matty Williams has the crowded candlestick on its feet. They were on their feet here at Cleveland a moment ago. But some fine defense by the Mariners. And look at Amaral's adjustment with the glove buck at the end. Watch a little bounce right at the end. Skims on him, and he gloves it. Unloads quickly to Fermin. It was only Lofton's speed that kept the Mariners from turning two on that play. Kenny Lofton with a hard slide. For me, turned around the opposite way, but it was only because he had to go with the throw. If Amaral's he could have continued, they had a shot at the double play to end the game. Boy, we were looking at a, at a shot to center field and Griffey trying to throw out the winning run there. Amaral preceded by the fine play in the right field corner by Buner, and that's the only reason Lou Pinello and the Mariners are still in the thing. Cleveland looked like it was... 
win here. It's the way they write the script in Jacobs Field, but who did not approve that script? So here we are in the 11th inning. Eric Plunk. We're going to Felix for me. Pops him up in the infield. Giscal makes the play this one. You know, if Lou Pinella would have had a veteran closer down there, he'd have been more confident, left him out there. Bobby Ayala basically was throwing the ball very well. He struck out the first two guys he faced, a strikeout in the ninth, a strikeout to start the tenth, then a walk. But Lou went percentages, brought in the left-hander Kevin King, and he gave up a double to left-handed pinch hitter Jim Tomey. Tommy, by the way, is the third baseman now for the Indians. Wayne Kirby stays in the game in right field. Here's Tommy in his socks at third base. What a attempt by Averall. Right, one kind of nonchalant. It eventually made the play to Murray, who's two outs. Had a good idea, but didn't get it toward the line. You can see Plunk right there making sure he has it. Makes it close at first base. Amaral hustling down there, just out by half a step. Mike Flowers is up, the third baseman, who did not start the game. He went into the bottom of the first after Edgar Martinez was hit on the wrist from a Dennis Martinez pitch. I didn't start the game, and he's already up to the plate for the fifth time this afternoon. 11th inning, 3-3. Two teams not used to thinking in April they're really in pennant races, but this year in 94, it's true. Mariners, Indians, both in the hunt in their respective divisions, each trying to get off on the right foot. Three runs, seven hits for Seattle. Three runs, five hits for the Indians, none of which occurred until the eighth. Randy Johnson had a no-hitter into the eighth inning. Sandy Alomar's single with none out in the eighth busted it open. And there's that sat up play. Handle stick in at Oakland that's in play for the first baseman. Maybe a couple others. Jacobs Field, the bunting is out. The fans are out. They've seen their Indians fight back twice. Two in the eighth to erase a 2-0 Mariner lead. One a moment ago in the bottom of the tenth to erase a 3-2 Seattle lead. Eric Anthony, two RBIs for the Mariners. One of which came on his first home run. Keith Mitchell, RBI single in the 10th. For Cleveland, a two-run double by the youngster Manny Ramirez in the 8th. Omar Vizquel, a fielder's choice in the 10th. Now you're up to date if you've just joined us. Chris Berman and Buck Martinez here at Jacobs Field. Is the ballpark what you thought it would be, Buck? Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. They've done a great job. I think everybody that has a opinion, the fans are close to the action. Everybody's right on top of the game. The sight lines are tremendous. The ball players are really thrilled with Swung out and missed. A breaking ball gets Flowers. And we head to the bottom of the 11th. Bell, Murray, and Sorrento. Why is Embassy Suites twice the hotel? First, you get a suite with two big rooms. Evening beverages are on the house, not on the bill. And our cook-to-order breakfast is free of charge. Obviously, this isn't your typical hotel. It's twice the room, twice the comfort, and twice the value. And it's only at Embassy Suites. Twice the hotel. Call 1-800-EMBASSY. All right, next play is Flash 87 Blue. Oh, oh, Wyatt! Please, I'd like to try this thing. 
call home. It's nice to be recognized, finally. Call now for the revolutionary voice-activated phone card, only from Sprint. Before introduction, a Moen faucet is tested at least a half million times against leaks and drips. So it's hard to find a more reliable faucet. No matter how you look at it. Moen. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. They plow the back 40. Introducing the new, more powerful Grand L series from Kubota with our smoothest, quietest tractor engine yet. Everyone's having such a good time here at Jacobs Field. No one wants to leave. Bottom of the 11th inning and the cleanup hitter for the Indians, Albert Bell, capable of ending it with one swing of his bat. 38 home runs last year. Doubled his last time up. Also reached on an air. He's one for four, but has been aboard twice this afternoon. At 129 RBIs last year to lead the major league. If he has one this year, we all go home. He's very strong out over the plate. As you mentioned, that drive to center field almost hit out of here. 410 feet to dead center. The Bell Tower. They hit it to the 410 slot. Had it been over about 20 feet, it would have been at least a wall job. Count is 3-0 to Albert Bell, so he better, be, better be careful. Oh, Bell, the green light at 3-0, and, and he full cued it to first. Tina Martinez will make the play, and the dangerous Albert Bell is gone. Of course, a reminder, as soon as we're done here at Jacobs Field, we'll check out the action at Candlestick Park. Gary showed you Matt Williams' solo home run off Zane Smith. And that's where they stand in the third. Joel and Kitty and the Hotel California gang ready. Eddie Murray sends it deep to center. Back goes Griffey. Back, back, back. It's off the wall. Murray around first into second base where he'll make a turn for third. And hold with a double. Eddie Murray thought that ball was out of the park. Watch his reaction. He gets all of it right there. That little hesitation. He thinks it's gone. Now he sees it might not go out of here. Hustling around there, takes a big turn around second, but sees Griffey get the ball back in and stops. Watch the reaction on the bench. Get up, get up, get up. Not quite enough. Paul Sorrento came on to pinch hit in the ninth inning, was struck out by Ayala. And he's up with a chance to win this thing on debut day at Jacobs Field. Yeah. He rips it to center. Griffey has room. Murray will tag. Good throw by Griffey, but it's cut off and Murray on into third base. So a good rip by Sorrento took Griffey back to the track. And Sandy Alomar Jr. up. Alomar broke up the no-hitter bid, the no-hit bid by Randy Johnson in the eighth. He won't have a chance to win it here in the eleventh because the lefty king will intentionally pass Alomar. Wayne Kirby left-handed hitter will come up next so the runner at first obviously means nothing well, Kirby came on as a pinch runner 
Canelo wants the matchup percentage is left hander against left hander with Murray at third base moved over there on the fly ball out to center so Alomar will take first it'll be up to Wayne Kirby Canelo moving the outfield around giving some instruction to Eric Anthony well, we talked about Kirby when he came on to pitch run. Ten years in the minor leagues until as a 29-year-old rookie, he made the squad last year. You can see that Anthony is shaded around toward left straight away in center. That's Griffey Jr. Jay Buhner is fairly straight away in right. Kirby had a very good season for the Indians. He led everyone in the majors in assists last year with 19 from the outfield. But they're not worried about his arm here. It's his bat. There goes Alomar with another one of those indifference. It's not a stolen base, but he's on second anyway. Well, what it does is it takes away the force out of second. Yep. You've got a tough play up the middle. He's too loud. Fielder's indifference, they call it. Ball two to Kirby. On deck is the left-handed hitting Jim Tomey. Who doubled his last time up. Way outside, it's Greeno. Three and zero. You come in with it, or just forget it and try another batter. No, you don't walk him, but you don't give him anything right down the middle. He found the strike zone. He still got some room to play with. Even though Tommy hit the double off the last year, you can't just concede a strike to Wayne Kirby. the beginning of a new era here in Cleveland. Wayne Kirby got a tough pitch to handle, but he rips it over Mike Bauer's head at third base. Eddie Murray raises his arms as he comes home to score the winning run. Indians got a little bit of everything today. Wayne Kirby cashes in Eddie Murray. And a look at the Cleveland dugout, Buck. Hey, one down, 161 to go. So a happy ending here for the crowd of over 41,000 of debut day at Jacobs Field. For Buck Martinez, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching. Now let's head on out to the stick with Joel and Jim.